we're gonna watch some of the best Trekmania that the best players have to offer. The current Trekmania World Championship is ongoing. It started with playoffs yesterday, and the top 32 players in the world played double elimination brackets. We're left with just, I believe it is eight players. Let me get that number exact. And no, more. It's actually 12 players left. So we have the brackets down here. We're gonna probably take a look at this match. Tween Pack Gwen Granati. This is an insane match. It starts in five minutes. You also have Wizzy, Jan, Epos, and Richie. <laughs> really sorry about the zoom. And then um, over here, Pasita Pak and Mime are waiting for these eight to duke it out. And Binks and Masa have gone undefeated through the bracket so far. So Otak is pre-qualified. Carl is pre-qualified. Uh, did Carl qualify through the North American Regional? Yeah, and then there's a tournament next weekend called XP EVO, which is essentially a Trickmania major tournament, where whoever wins that also gets just an instant qualify into the, the finals. Now, you guys I might not know all these players too well. Like, a lot of you will know Granati, you've seen him in a couple of days. But you might not have seen Tween or Pack. These are players that, um are really good at Trekmania, but simply don't play competitions without prize pools. A couple of days has no prize pools, so they don't bother. But when the World Cup rolls around, and when these big prestigious tournaments roll around, they boot up the game, practice for a few hours, and they're still better than everyone. So I can introduce you to them. Uh, Tween here is a legend in the game. He has been at the top level for over 10 years, I'd say close to 15 years. Started really getting good in 2010, 2011 in the Old Trek Mania. And the thing about Tween is that he's he's never won a World Cup, but he has five second places. Four or five second places. I'm somewhat muddy on the stats right now. Haven't casted esports in a while. But yeah, just always been up there in the finals in, in this 1v1v1 format. Pack here, also been at the top. Started getting really good around 2014, 2015 and won the World Cup in 2016. So he uh, he's a ex-world champion, although eight years ago now. And uh, did play in the duo format last year with Carl Jr. and they got second in the previous World Cup, so... He's the current runner-up, you could say, with his teammate Carl Jr. Unfortunately, Carl Jr. exists. Yeah, so unfortunate for Tween. But always been a great player through, throughout the evolution of this game. Uh, Granati used to play only Trekmania United with the snow car and stuff. That's why anytime there's a snow car cup of the day, we just get destroyed. Then started learning the stadium car around 2020. And uh, yeah, didn't take him long to master this thing. So we're just waiting for the players to join. And then uh, we're waiting for, um, for Gwen, who is a speed demon. The players are playing one versus one versus one versus one. It's a free for all. In each round, they race to the finish line. The first place player gets 10 points, then it's 6, 4, and 3. So the first places are really rewarded, you want to risk for first. They play until someone reaches 120 points, where after that, you have to win one more round in so-called finalist mode to secure your spot in the next round. So you have to play until you reach 120, and then you have to win one round. If you don't win that round after 120, you're not getting out of the match. And the others can ca catch up to you. So it's uh, it's a format that we've competed in Trickmania for close to 20 years, 2006. And uh, it's really exciting. It's really exciting to see people can clutch finalist mode. Who would I think will win? Yeah, let me make my predictions here. Uh, it's so hard to tell. Pack is always like in the running in World Cups. I think he hasn't failed to qualify for World Cup since like 2015, 2014, around there. And then he won in 2016, as I said earlier. But this is, uh, this is, uh, they're already in the loser bracket here. If you lose this match, you're out. Goes for all four. I want to say Gwen and Pack. But I also know Granati is very consistent on these maps. I have not seen Tween Drive at all. But Pack, Pack, I think is gonna be through. And then I'm torn between Granati and Gwen. 
Gwen one Volvic. Yeah, Gwen is such a um, glass cannon when it comes to Trackmania Esports. He is incredibly fast. Have you ever gotten crit by like a Draven with maximum AD in League of Legends? That hurts, but then he also has no defense. So you, you can easily one-shot him if you get onto him, right? Gwen is like that. He drives either World Record or Crash. That's the Trekmania equivalent. Entire tournament favorite. I think the player that's been driving by far the, the cleanest so far is Binks, who we'll see in the, the winner or the, the grand final of the playoffs, not the World Cup. Just the playoffs section later. But yeah, it's fun. I want to take you guys through this. Type 1 in chat if you've never seen Trackmania Esports. If you want just the full... This sounds interesting. Let me see if this is something for me. If you want the full... Just 1 in chat. Type 1. And we'll go through it, alright? 1.5. Okay, a little bit familiar. A little bit familiar. That's good. That's good. So, let's take a look at this. <laughs> and this map is going to be quite visually overwhelming. The map here is called Secrets. They're, they build new maps for each tournament. This one is called Secrets because there are so many hidden ways that are faster. The players have had 10 days to practice these maps. They know all the hidden ways, but it's going to be visually like a bit confusing. They play a race to the finish line. It's uh, first to the finish line gets 10 points. Second place gets 6, 4, and 3. And they play rounds until all the players reach 120 points. Where, when they reach 120, if you win one more round afterwards, then you are uh, through. And the top two players go through, the bottom two are eliminated. So into the first round, we saw a mistake from Grin Naughty, and now it's only a three-player battle for this first 10-pointer. Gwen with a little bit of an internet connection, it looks like. But it's okay. Some shortcut jumps here and a bug slide onto the reactor. Now you want a tight left drift before this quarter pipe jump up right. And it looks like all of them landed. Tween, though, with a great run so far. Gwen and Pac are just side by side. There is a very difficult jump coming up here where you jump onto the beam and across the scenery here instead of taking the safe alternative. And now you're coming up to the ending. There's a risky finish here. If you jump and land on the left platform, you can use this bubble to jump into the bobsleigh so finish and Tween wins the first round. 106.8. It's the winning time. That's very strong. Anything under 107 here. It's very good. Can maybe pull up Trekmania IO to get you guys the, the world record splits. And then we go again. Um, one second. So on Secrets, the current world record is by Gwen. Set two hours ago. <laughs> In practice, he drove a 10633. So you can still maybe squeeze about half a second, but it's tough! Oi, oi, oi. A little bit shaky start for Gwen. But now Granati is back in the battle. He failed early on in the previous round. Tight drift around this road corner, and there goes Tween into the wall. It's very much um, oh, such a wide bug slide. Yeah, Gwen gains a lot here on the inside. It's, it's a map a lot about speed preservation. The jumps only work if you, from here, for example, carry enough speed, Gwen, clipping the block. You need to carry speed onto the tiny balancing beam here. And the same in the ending. You're always thinking about setup for a good speed line. And Granati looks to come back all the way from last in the previous round to a first here. Jumps wide, pack, clipping, and gets ended off. Dumping him down not just one spot, but down all the way. Will Mime be playing? Yeah, Mime's waiting in the next match. So basically, the whoever wins here plays whoever wins in the other quarterfinal. And then they play in the semifinal, and then there's a loser final. And that's where Mime and Pustito Paco are currently waiting. Yeah, it's in two matches. Like, it's cutthroat here. The players that are in this match basically have to win three in a row to secure their tournament spot. If not, they're just out of World Cup. You could win two. If you don't win all three, you're out. So it's really cutthroat. Another good start by Granati. That's that consistency I talked about. Had a crash, but he's finding... Oh, I was gonna say he's finding the flow. Really difficult maps to drive here, though. Uh, has to be side guys. The, the World Cup map packs that they build, these are not your regular Cup of the Day tracks. Like, these are tracks where... 
you're either on the ideal trajectory or you're just gonna crash out. And maybe a little bit too crash heavy, uh, the maps that they build this time around. But what a battle between pack and tween. Tween with maybe a better approach for this uphill. Oh, decides to safe it here. Not going for the risky pack gets it. And tween has a safe gap for second. Just securing those points. And that will keep his uh, first place in the match so far. Had a couple of rest good wrestling days. Yeah, I've had some amazing wrestling days. I'll tell you guys about it uh, a little bit more in detail later, but feeling good. Gonna cast some World Cup, then get back to uh, trying deep dip a little bit more. I'm gonna make a tier list, go for the record. Just have fun with it. But so much relief, honestly. Just being uh, done with the map now, finally. Round four of secrets. I think every player has crashed on this already. But it's usually like that with the first map, I feel, in a match. It's so hard to just go out of warm-up and then instantly start playing perfect round back to back to back. So we see the bug slide. Gwen again with this inside line. I think Tween has the best of it with that drift setup now. Oh, such a low jump too. All four players with N.2. So see a different approach there. Granati with such a good landing. Look at the speed onto the dirt. Tween making a mistake as well. Granati passing another opponent. But Glenn looks to have this under control onto the. Ah! Has to save it! Has to save it! And Granati takes the win. 106.98. Glenn in third with that. A nice two wheel from Pack. You think with this map pack, it also makes it more crash heavy? Yeah, there, there's... I mean, the most drivable map, we're gonna see it later, it's called Wave Control. That one, they crash the least on. And it's the most normal. But, um... The other maps are really, really wild. Do any of them play on keyboard? Tween is a keyboard player. Granati steering wheel, and Pack and Gwen are both controller. So Tween, if you're a keyboard player, he's your uh, representative. And then if you talk about, like, a uh, little bit more as so you get to know them. You know their countries, obviously, but... Uh, Tween, I believe, is the oldest player in this match. Again, he's been top of the competitive scene in Trackmania for 12, 13 years. Five World Cup second places. Uh, Gwen is the youngest. Gwen is... I'd have to guess 21 now, 22, something like that. Cannot fully remember, but uh, he's always been just a, a phenom in Trackmania. Started getting really good when he was like 14 and uh, crushing in the Serrator Cup, but hasn't ever gotten that far in the World Cup. Onto the grass, there's a lot of reactors on this map. And then this speed section on this officer's blocks. Low line around the tires, small clip from Tween. But you see a lot more drivability here. Here they actually bump across the grass on purpose, not how Tween got it. But they try to reduce the amount of tires that are touching penalty grass. When you're coming up to the ending, really difficult part here to jump onto the top without crashing into the tires and uh... Very close up front, Gwen, 114.18. 113 is typically like the really good winning pace here. World record 113.82, also by Gwen. But look at this, guys. Already so close on the match. Everyone within just a few points. Let's watch Gwen this round. See how he does it. Oh, and he gets a wheel clip. Oh, pain. So annoying to get slow downs like that. But you know, he might actually be able to come back a little bit. Half a second is rough though. Half a second is rough to try to catch. So real quick, makes you guys can't see my mouse cursor. A little bit better to watch. Alright, on board with Granati. Coming up to the ending. It's important to get good speed onto the wood. He does get that. Now Tween is getting caught up to a little bit. Pack still with a clear lead. 
Nice line on the grass here again. Let's get close. Tween also catching up to Pack. It's a very close battle. Pack gets more speed on the exit there. Looks like the two up front are pulling away from Granati. The bouncy line. Better for Pack. And now Granati might get closer. Around the dirt and down the hole. As we see Granati enter the field of vision. Still only one turn to go. Tween risking now up the dirt. More speed around it. Up to the tires. What an ending by Tween. Jesus. And Tween, I think, takes the lead of the match. Just barely. <laughs> it's so close. It's so close. He just full sent that. Did they get to train on the maps at a time? Yeah, they've trained for 10 days. It's, uh, and which is usually actually less than what they get in other tournaments. Typically, it's about a month they get the maps before the, the cup starts. But uh, 10 days has been very intensive training for a lot of the players. And, uh, and that's maybe what we see a little bit too, that if they had more time to train, because it's five maps, 10 days, and you have to be able to drive them perfect on repeat, round after round. And these are such precise jumps. Like, if you don't keep good speed out of the wood, you're not making that drop down to the dirt road. If you're not able to calculate the re reactor lines in the grass, you're not going to make this jump clean. And so on and so on. On to the actual battle here, though. Pack and Gwen splitting 100th apart. Pack hitting the wall. Unfortunate. Now Gwen with a clean opportunity for 10 points. So you are very wide. A little bit shaky, bounces out the map behind the name tag there. Maybe hard to see. Tween versus Granati. And it looks like Tween's ending here is just far superior. He wins another round. <laughs> like uh, if, if I tried to drive this map, guys, you'd see just how how much of like practice these guys have put in. And their skill level. It's it's completely insane to drive this back to back to back. Oh, and another clip. I believe that was Gwen. Yeah, this looks like a very good map for Tween. Roll cage, his consistency, two ten pointers in a row. And just generally not making a lot of mistakes, although his tire there was just pixels from the wall. Granati with a little bit of a different dirt line. Loses some ground. <laughs> Sets up wide. This speed line, I think, pays off in the long run. Look at the speed down into the dirt now. Coming back into the fight. All three players basically equal, 100th apart. Now the sausage turn. The drop down into the drift. You want to get closer on the tire. Pack gets it good, but bounces a little bit on the exit and does not get the full gains that he was hoping for onto the bumps. You literally only see one car as Granati, though. It's the first to fall. Tween has a better ending. We know that. And he is a car length out of pack. Can pack do anything about this? Does not look like it. Although, a lot of penalty grass from Tween who has to bug slide. And he does get passed on the final straight. Pack 10 points this time. Which method are playing? There's a new uh, map pack every World Cup. So uh, it's not kind of like in CSGO where you have Mirage and Dust2 and these things, like iconic maps. They, um, they mix it up every time. So as a viewer, I know it can be a bit confusing if you haven't seen these maps before. Just try to take some time to take in the map. We can go through it as well. This is wave control and arguably the most drivable one. It has a lot of water, wet tires is a big theme on this map, which is hard to drive with. The car is very um, vulnerable to sliding out a lot, so you can lose your grip. You have wet wood reactor and, and new themes we've never had in a World Cup before. So here we go, first round, starts with some water onto the wet wood reactor, flick around this turn. <coughs> Excuse me. Then a sharp drift before you jump into the water, dip the tires again, and now we're on some plastic. Sand to dry the tires, and then once more, we are going to see this theme repeat with a water bounce onto the road. And here, players opt to wallbang. There is a line where you don't wallbang as well, 
but it's a lot more predictable to slam your car into the wall much to the developers dismay the developers really do not like when wall bang lines are faster but the players ended up finding one and it's on the map so they are allowed to use it down into the water wall hug and now you have a very tight ending section you have to get around this turn with a good inside line granada gets to the best and then quarter pipe jump up and you end with a wet tires bug slide it looks like granada has this under control First time pointer to him. One second. Gotta try to not strain my voice too much. But, um... It's fun to cast. World record on this. Dude, what has Gwen eaten for breakfast this morning? He dropped a world record on Secrets two hours ago. He also got world record on this two hours ago. 10626. But despite these world records, he's last in the match by about 10 points. Not the worst margin. But he needs to be able to drive this on the server now as well. Not just in practice. Wall bang line it is for Gwen. And you can see that he catches up the tween who doesn't do the wall bang strategy. Onto the ice as early as possible. And here you can go pretty high and get a lot of booster down. Seems to be what is the fastest. Look at this line from Gwen. Now setting it wide to straighten out early on the penalty. There for slide less, there for have more speed. It's all very meticulous. Every move here into the water wall. Hug and he has to slide a lot to get rid of these skids there. And it looks as though Tween has a pretty comfortable lead, but here comes Gwen. Maybe has something to say about it in the last bug slide. Tween with the bonk could hear that one through the monitor and a 100th win for Gwen insane yo Oak thank you for the 52 months so punishing right you drive perfect for one minute 06 keeping up with the world record pace within half a second of the world record pace and you make one tiny mistake on your line and you get three points the same as if you're plus 10 seconds like, it's so stacked, these matches. 60, 60, and 58, and now 52 for Gwen. Pack hitting the wall a bit, but that's not the worst mistake we've seen. This one is very drivable. If he makes the water bounce, which he does, and keeps his composure. We saw a big crash that was tween into the flagpole. And now it looks as though Granati has just a very comfortable lead to work with. Got robbed of the 10 pointer, but this one could be his to right. Gwen had a very good ending last time. I don't want to count him out yet. Half a second is rough. No, he has to release here too. That might be accepting his spot here and just safing. Don't think he can catch Pack if Pack does not make a mistake. Doesn't really look like he will. Just a little bit too big of a... Whoa, yeah, and there's the mistake though. There's the mistake, but Gwen wasn't going to push for it without... Uh, without reason but it's kind of like when 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 you see the splits and they're paying close attention to the splits when they drive when you know your opponents are good you see that they have a three tenth lead on you you kind of respect that i feel like if it's closer like a tenth of a second you can push but three times in Trackmania is just so much time and look at the start from glenn what how did he gain that much in the first drift, the first 20 seconds of driving. Pa keeping up, the others falling a bit behind. Oh, wheel clip from Tween and a little bit from Gwen too. This pack gets us loaded onto the ice. More speed for Gwen here, I think. Oh, so unfortunate for Granati. That's a camera three moment. Granati plays with the alternative camera three where you can't even see the car. Sometimes you can uh, miscalculate where the wheels are at on such turns. Going around the bug slide, a little bit late, but 106 again. Did I ever compete in a World Cup? I have not, no. But with maps like the this, guys, I, I wouldn't be able to drive them. 
Very honestly. I crashed on a couple of the day maps, and a couple of the day maps are 10 times easier than this. Given enough time to train, maybe it'll be fun. And there, there are some tournaments I want to play, like... But I think they're more like country championships and stuff, which are fun. Team championships. A solo comp like this, with 10 days of practice, just... I don't know if I, I'd enjoy it or go very far. Now we're on to Castle Mania, the map we saw the worm upon. <laughs> Who competes to today? Maybe someone has the link for the bracket so you can see it. It's on uh, Liquipedia. Gwen with a disconnect. That should hopefully be uh, end round, but I'm not sure what the policy is. But yeah, some type of disconnect for Gwen. Very unfortunate. If, uh, if it keeps happening. We saw a little bit of lag earlier. Yeah, they are gonna end the round and we go again. Just gonna let Gwen fix that issue. Like what he, what he got was that his car <laughs> is in a different position on his screen than what the server thinks it is. And so he just drives off the map when he thinks he's driving clean. Is it a yellow Red Bull drinking? I'm drinking a Swedish drink. It's called uh, Trocadero. It's a pear soda type thing. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's apple. I've always thought it tastes like pear. But if it's apple, okay. Orange and apple. Maybe those two combine for a pear-like taste. Apple fanboy. <laughs> oh, damn, yeah. Love me some apple products. Love to consume. How many players qualify for World Cup? So this tournament, this playoffs tournament, has the 32 highest ranked players in the world based on the circuit they play monthly. So basically, top 32 in the world are playing for playoffs, and top 4 go through in this tournament. I think it is. I think that's... Yeah, top 4 go through. But then there's a match between the top 4 to give the winner a uh, huge advantage. This is kind of crazy. If you, if you win in the grand final of the playoffs later, you get to pick your opponents in your semi-final. <laughs> I have never seen a tournament with this. Like, imagine you're in a, in a, in a melee tournament or something. You're like, yeah, I want to play this guy and that guy and that guy. You get to pick your opponents. It's just this ridiculous advantage. Because then you can, you can strategize, right? Oh, I know this person's bad on map 4 and I'm genius on map 4. Let me pick map 4 and this opponent. Riot has done it as well. <laughs> and it's like, imagine getting picked, like first picked, not even, you know? It's like the opposite in school when you get last picked for football. You get first picked as an opponent in a match? Like, Jesus. Here we go. First round in Castlemania. Haven't mentioned this map much, but clearly visual aesthetics are different. Hopefully you guys will get familiar with it. A little bit of lag from Gwen in a crash. Not sure if that was uh, the server or him, though. But regardless... <laughs> I do not know how Twins survived. Uh, this map is one that the players struggle with, but for different reasons than the other maps. You have uh, all these sharp castle edges they drive on. And if you drive the ideal line, you sometimes want to float one wheel in the air and take a very inside corner. But when doing that, you risk clipping the wheel and losing all your speed. It's going to happen in this drift right here. You have to go around the drift and make sure to not clip the wheel on the edges. If you do, you can sometimes survive and sometimes lose a second or more. Pack with a crash. And I'm seeing some funky time warping going on. We're going faster and then slower. It's a little all over the place. Hopefully everything's good with the server. 
114.8 by Grad is a great winning time. The uh, typical pace here, I think it's it's 113 for the very fastest runs. 113.77 world record. At Virtual, have you ever thought of planting a tree the day you may become a father to see you both grow at the same time? So that's not really what my mind is thinking about right now. But I, I appreciate the question. That's not really the headspace I'm in. But there's a proverb I really like. A, a Chinese proverb, which is that the best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. And the second best time is today. Like, there might be things that you feel like, oh man, I should have done this ages ago. But it's still not too bad if you just do it today. You know? So that proverb I like. So I like the concept of planting trees in general. It's a Reddit proverb. Sometimes you, uh, you, you need these uh, short, short bites of wisdom that people have uh, written down as tween. He takes the lead. Now Granati is going to go for the YOLO proverb, I believe, and uh, get the 10-pointer just in the time before Pack overtakes him. <laughs> Got any more wisdom? Um, use Twitch Prime, it's free. Rexocut, thank you for the Prime. Free value. Bro, what a match. 93, 80, 75, 74. Top two advance, bottom two are out, guys. At 120. At uh, Virtual, have you ever thought of putting a cheeseburger in a glass box the day your son is born to watch it age at the same time as your son? Oh, one of those, um... What are they called? Like, plasma... Plasma cake boxes? <laughs> Resin, yeah. Why pause? There's clearly some uh, lag issue going on. So uh, I'm not sure what's happening. It, I think it, it, like, it looks like Gwen is the only one having the issue. So I don't think it's the server. I think it's Gwen's connection. But uh, hopefully, hopefully I can fix it. Are you still sick? Yeah, a little bit. I'm, I'm feeling way better, but I, I can clearly tell I'm not fully uh, healthy yet. Is it just 120? Yes. Let me actually blow my nose while we wait now. They should do this, but with real cars, you small, and they absolutely should. And, uh... And good safety precautions. One second, guys. I thought we started, but we didn't. We're good. <laughs> Would I take my headset off to blow my nose? I mean, you just... Look too deep into it. I... I, I... This is in-depth caster analysis. We're looking at the players. Here's another proverb, guys. If you want to build a great pyramid, start with the foundation. That's the first thing the Egyptians did. They didn't just start stacking stones. They did tons of landscaping to get a perfectly flat plateau. Because you don't want the pyramid to get tilted. There's some wisdom for you. Build a plateau and then build a pyramid. Don't get too excited. I know you want to stack stones, it's human nature. But... You know. Gotta take care of business first. Being able to practice during the pause feels a bit fair. Gwen is practicing too, to be fair. 
It's not like the others are practicing and Gwen is just here. They're all checking out the connection. Here we go, guys. We're back in. A little unfortunate for Gwen here with the connection issues, but... I think, honestly, what's been happening is that he's driving too fast for the server to compute. His pace. One of the world record holder holders on many of the maps, and... If he gets into the flow here, we might see some... Ooh! Ew, scary pace! We see one player falter at the turn. I believe that was Granati. Three-player battle between Tween, Pack, and Gwen. Pack in third for now. Maybe a better setup here, though. Oh, <gasps> and he gets a wheel clip. Oh, he gets a wheel clip on the black border. Get no slide from Gwen. Trailing just behind Tween before we get up to this very decisive 180 drift. Exit speed here, so important. Gwen with the better of it. Lance wider on the dirt. We'll have more speed through here. Can he manage the bumps? He can. And Tween crash. This is going to be a 10-pointer for Gwen, most likely. Wait. Tween didn't crash. 1v1. Gwen with the snipe. <laughs> oh my god, my voice. I was trying very hard not to cough there. Sound? Oh, you know what it is? Hey guys, I have a... A mini fridge and ice is currently melting in the mini fridge because it got too cold. Um, okay, I, surely we'll be fine. I put it like really cold for a while and then things started freezing, so now I'm putting it warmer. And things are melting. That's what's happening. Prove that there's a fridge. I, ca I cannot prove it to you. You're gonna have to trust me. A mistake from Pack there. Bernardi almost at 100 points. They played to 120. Just so you have it there. Oh, wheel clip, yeah. You guys might start to understand <coughs> players' frustrations with this map. Because you just think, why, why would they clip the wheels? Okay? Like, yeah, you clip the corner, you deserve to crash. The thing about this game is that the ideal line is often going slightly over those edges. It's just that the edges are built in a way where you typically just, you either do that or you crash or you don't get the line anyway. So it's very frustrating. Big battle for second, Gwen looks to walk in another 10-pointer, which will propel him up to second already. He, he, I mean, he's already in second, but now even closer to Granati. So the lag issue seems to have definitely been resolved. Here you see uh, Gwen uninterrupted by uh, by lag. Imagine it like this. It's, it's so volatile. The mapper essentially asks you when you compete at this level to risk the corner or get fourth place anyway. Now, guys, you're going to have to peel your eyes, because this is the most visually overwhelming map I have ever seen in a, in a World Cup tournament. Checkmate tournament. The map is called Spin Off. And we're going to see the map, uh, the, the cars spin in all kinds of ways. You start backwards. You then have this checkpoint turnaround on uh, a booster. You jump up. Then you have an ice 360 spin, and it's hard to do. Gwen with a small mistake. You now have a another turnaround on the plastic. You can do this backwards, but everyone drives forwards. A spin here. Onto the pipe. Ooh, good save. And then you jump into the wall, right? There's a spin movement onto the ice. You didn't really get to see it. Pack crashing. A very difficult map here. Extremely difficult. Round the circle. Bumper Granati has to respawn. <laughs> it's a disaster. Oh, this map. It's so cool when it works, but it's just ridiculous to drive, man. Backwards across the red boosters. Worth noting that there's a 10 second... No way. Okay, Tween's gonna finish, at the, but it's so hard. 
It's such a hard map. <laughs> I and and I I hate like. We're not laughing at the players here, alright? We're laughing with the players. Because the players are equally just dumbfounded that, you know, this is what they're competing on. It's so different from other Trekmania competition maps. So that was a 111. I believe the good pace here is again like 105? 106? Let me double check. For you guys. Sorry, 107 is Gwen's world record matting! Jesus! <coughs> Jesus, bro! Thank you for gifting 30 subs! Thank you so, so much for the huge support in Twitch chat. That's out of nowhere. Let's take a look at the round here. I don't want to get divert too much from the cast, but really appreciate that. It's a cleaner round this time around. You have... Pack and Granati in the sick battle first. Granati in the lead. Oh, doesn't turn around here. Locks the car up somehow. Maybe hard to do that on steering wheel. Pack now with a clean chance for first. Desperately needed as he is only at 89. Has to keep up with the others. And importantly, Granati here gets last. That's really important if you're a pack because it prolongs the match. The point limit, 120. Now we see 100, 100 uh, 110, 99, 98. So Pack here gets more chances to catch up. The slower Granati progresses to 120. Gwen with a really fast start. Ooh, hoo -hoo. He's insane. That was such a good spin. He's going to be close to half a second ahead. Tween keeping up. He goes for the backward strategy. This is faster, but so difficult to control. Oh! He slides out. Tween overtakes. But it was a good showing of how this map can be played if you were wicked with it. Gets a nice flick. Oh my god. <laughs> Being on board with Gwen always feels like you're just... On board with a rally driver with no safety concerns. Oh, it crashes a bit. Not sure if on purpose. Tween point seven I had. It should be Tween's ten pointer. But Gwen is making him work for it. Gwen is making him work for it. It's not gonna be enough. Gains a couple of tenths, but Tween still holds on. One oh eight 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 eight. Oh pack. Does he have to finish? Three seconds. He does. Bro, it's so close. It's so close. And so here's the thing, just so you guys all know how this works. At 120 points, you reach finalist mode. What that means is you have to win one more round to secure your spot. So you can get to 120, but if you don't win that last round afterwards, uh, you're not moving on. You have to win a round afterwards. You can never score points after that. Backwards for Gwen, you can maybe see it here. Gets a better Joe. Yeah, okay. Maybe not that much faster or safer, but the style points, no one can say anything about. Around the circle, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. There's lag going on. Pack versus tween. 4,000s apart. Pack really needs this pointer. He somehow doesn't lose speed by clipping the tires. It actually even almost gained him. Not sure how he held on to that. Can he compose himself for the ending? Looks good with the speed. Is Tween anywhere near? Sniping this away. Doesn't look like it. Pack takes it. And Granati still not reaching finalist. Guys, we could have a really rare scenario here where everyone is finalist at the same time. <laughs> like, it's very much looking like that can't happen here. I have no idea how Pack to survive that. <laughs> what a match, though. <laughs> We're back to the first map, Secrets. And here we saw... I think we saw Tween be the most consistent and Pack be the fastest. We have a 10-second warm-up remaining, and then we go in. 
Also, Granati crashed out early, but then he was consistent. Fine, this is such a dumb concept. It's been this way for a long time, and the players all like it. You just have to clutch up. And if you're behind, you can always deny. You always get a really fair chance to deny when someone reaches 120. Tween in the lead. First shortcut, first secret. Goes well for all four players. Now we have a very sharp drift coming up. And then we have the bug slide. Glenn typically an inside line here, Granati more wide. Speed versus just reaching your destination sooner. Granati overtakes with that wide setup, jumping up to the quarter pipe, landing perfectly. And the speed is gonna carry down the jumps as well. Now onto the beam. Granati only needs to finish to get finalists, but first place will deny the others the chance to be there with him. Last jumps. Can Granati get his finalist spot locked in? Yes, he can. So he's gonna be finalist mode. Gwen can't finish here, I don't think. Five seconds. Has to go for the safe. Uh oh. No points for Gwen. No points for Gwen. Tween and Granati both finalists. Pack 116, Gwen 110. Only top to advance, bottom two are out of the tournament. But Gwen here, with great pace, can deny. He set a world record on this two hours before the match. 106.30. Granati drove a 106.70 there. Already saw one mistake. I believe that was Tween losing a little bit of time. So Gwen and Pac here kind of have to work together to make this a legendary quadruple finalist. It's very rare we see that. So we're in for a treat here. If they can make it happen. Granati's bug slide though was so good last time. And it is this time two almost crashes. Awkward approach. Very difficult quarter pipe jump to save for him now. And he has to surrender a little bit of time lost to pack. Pack in first. Gwen really needs pack to hold on to this lead. And Granati just trying to find two attempts and he would be through to the next round. Pack though. Holding on, pushing through the trees. Does he get the speed for this? Looks good for Pack, and Pack will now put himself in finalist mode two. And Gwen has uh, won 14 points. So it's going to be tough for him. This match is delivered on all fronts. It's triple finalist, it's a rarity. Let's see who can clutch up under all the pressure. Granati jumping very high here in a shaky landing. You can see how that costs time across the next platform. Pack in the lead. Granati going for a very inside approach next to the checkpoint. Tween there with him now. Gwen, the only player without a red number on his car, without the finalist mode, needs to win two in a row. Oh, has to release though. Such good adaptation to see that. The bug slide is good. A little bit wide, perhaps. Pack extending his lead. Such good pace on this map. Low jump. Oh, it's good for both Gwen and Pack. Granati trailing just a little bit behind. Not the best landing for Gwen. It's going to be hard to mount a comeback, but the line on the dirt was sublime, and he's just a car length behind Gwen. Can he make it quadruple finalists? One versus one in the ending. Gets a good approach, a little too wide. Pack is gonna go through by the looks of it. Pack takes the first spot. Now Gwen needs to finish, and it's only six. It's only four points out of the six he needs. So, still not finalist for Gwen. Whew, that was close. Still cinematic, but not absolute cinema. But still a cinematic round. Oh, Granati. I was gonna say, yeah, he missed the ramp there. Not a mistake you see too often. And Tween with a mistake as well. Cannot make the shortcut jump. Gwen has like a five second lead. That's only two seconds. It's only two seconds, so it's... What's scary about this type of time
time difference is you might want to go for the safe finish, but I don't think you can. Maybe you can, maybe you have enough of a lead. You you still have to land the beam jump, that's a guarantee. You have to get across. And he does make it. But now let's see the decision making, it's three seconds. I think at this point you can save the ending. Do we see Gwen? <laughs> okay, dude. Does not care. Does not care at all. Triple finalist. This is the last round. One player moves on, two are out of World Cup. Gwen has a lot of records. Granati's been very consistent. And Tween had some insane endings on this map. Roll Cage. The dirt one with the tires. Tween had some really good endings on this map. Let's see it. Really hope that none of the players get the wheel clip in the start. We want this to be decided. Not just by a small variant. We want this to be decided in pure racing. So let's hope for the best here. Here we go. Last round of the match. No wheel clips happen. We're good. We're good. No wheel clips will decide this one. Let's see who takes it. Pretty much equal out of the first 20 seconds. The drift to the left now. Ooh, shaky for Twee. Not the best speed. Has to jump here. Definitely not what you want. And point two behind. Makes his World Cup dreams. They might be in uh, in danger as we see Granati and Gwen. They'll fight on Granati with way more speed than Gwen before this last dirt part. Oh, looks good for Granati. Point two ahead. Could knock out one of the tournament favorites, Gwen, here. If he keeps this pace up, good line there. Good setup for the sausage drift. Gwen getting closer, though. There is a chance in the very ending here. You drop onto the sand a bit and make sure not to get penalty. Now the last part, guys. Here we go. The drop down. Gwen risks. He risks it all, and it's not going to work. Granati is left alone up front, and he is going to the next round. Knocking out Tween and Gwen. Insane match. Huge clutch from Granati to get through. That's crazy. That's crazy, guys. I think very few people had Glenn out this early, but what a match. Since I'm third? Oh yeah, guys, I got third. I played pretty well. Thank you for that. No, seriously, thank you. GG's. <laughs> could have been a grand final. It could have actually been, yeah. No, the, the level at the top is, is ridiculous. What a game. Let's take a look at the other match that was played at the same time. See if they can I mean, they have to have concluded, right? Because we have tech issues and all that. Uh, so I think the others have already ended their match. Let's take a look. Oh. So let's see now. Have they ended? I cannot find out what the result is. Blow your nose, virtual. That sniffing is disgusting. Guys, I'm showing up to work sick. I want to deliver some entertainment to you guys. I appreciate you not wanting sniff sounds, but don't call me disgusting. Bro, I'm trying my best out here. You're disgusting. X, the final X. I'll, I'll sort it for you. But, let's see. Wow, wow, okay. Now this was may maybe... I wouldn't say an expected result. But this is what we see, guys. Uh, Wissy and Epos beat Jan and... Richie. So we will have Epos, Wissy, Pack, and Granati. Epos and Wissy might be players you're not too familiar with. Or maybe you're familiar with Wissy. The wheel player. 
and then they will play the top two advance to face Mime and Posita Paco, and then the top two of that match proceed to play against Masa and Binks. So yeah. Let's get in-game, guys. I think this match is going to start quite soon. And let's have a prediction for this one. As well. So we can't join yet. We should get a prediction, guys. Uh, basically, Wissy is a steering wheel player, plays a couple of days a lot. Epos is fascinating. I hadn't heard of him before Trekmania 2020. So he's gotten good in the last four years. And like, he is really good. I actually watched a video this morning. Uh, from a previous tournament he played. Epos Trekmania. It was, um... Yeah, this one. Guys, look at this record. Let me, um... Reset this one. What? Ah, okay. Not this one. The other one. The next map. This is one of the coolest Trackmania records I've seen. You don't need to know the map to know that this is good driving. Just look at it. So you start with a very precise part. Was it this one? No. Wait, what? Sorry, not this one. The map is called Arrowgate. I thought it was the second one. Yeah, it's this one. It's okay here. This record, okay? Oh, so why is my webcam? Very precise part with a reactor flight. Look, oh, do you see that turn? And then you just have pure precision low around this. And then an outside dirt thing with a no slide around this entire turn. So close to the wall. Close to this. Close to that. Good exit speed. Weaving. Close to that. Close to this. Lord Almighty. Outside door turn. Bug slide. It's just ridiculous. It's... You know, on a competition map, if you're point three out of the others, just a insane, insane pace. And this is a very stacked tournament. The Beacon World League. And then you have the risky finish coming up. So crazy. Like, the precision in that run is otherworldly to me. <laughs> this part, like, and you, you kind of don't appreciate it, I feel like, in full speed. Let's go... Uh, 0.25 speed is too slow. Half speed? Just... The margins that they have for success are so slim. It's good with the whooshing sound when you pass a wall like this. Ooh. Ooh. It's crazy. Back wheel close to the wall. Good bug slide. No, just insane. Epos is a very good player. And I think a player I'm, I'm, I'm really booting for in this next one. Just because... Oh, it's... Has it started? It might have started, guys. No, it starts in two minutes. Okay, I don't want to be late. <laughs> it's definitely... I don't want to join late. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Yeah. Wizzy and Epos, both from the UK. You have... Oh, Pack as well from the UK. It's a triple UK match. And Granati. Gamba, do we have any mods here? Any Gamba? Cause then we can set it up. I'd be I'd be uh, happy to predict my channel points here. We're predicting only for the winner of the match. So, even if your second pick goes through, we're just predicting the winner. Because you only pick one. 
How does this work? Uh, let me explain. I can actually explain during uh, the warm up here. You have four players. It's Wizzy, Pack Renati, and Epos, who's going to join the server in a minute. They play until they reach 120 points. They drive races back to back on each map. In each race, the player that gets first place gets 10 points. Second gets six and third gets four. Fourth gets three points. You really want to get the 10 pointers. Push yourself closer and closer to 120. When you reach 120, you have to win one final round to secure your spot. Top two goes through, bottom three are eliminated from the tournament. And finishing is important because otherwise you get zero, yeah. So even if you crash, you still gotta continue. Is it a really a one hour warm up? No, no, no. It's just the default <coughs> server setting. When the last player joins, the match auto starts. It looks crazy. 58 hour warm up? But, uh, but no. It's it, when the last player joins, now it's gonna start. <laughs> Sorry. I, get, I, I haven't been worried by this before, too. How many events from the grand final? All four. But they play for seeding, and seeding is insanely important. If you win the grand final of the playoffs, you get to decide your opponents in the actual, like, World Cup tournament semifinal. Here we have the maps. Castle Mania, Roll Cage, Secret, Spin-Off, and Wave Control. In that order, it looks like... No, wait. Castlevania, Wave Control, Secrets, then Roll Cage, then Spin-Off. You like the team format? I think most people do. Um, th yeah, but this is a good question. One in chat if you prefer this free-for-all format. Two if you prefer the team format. I think the team format is a little less chaotic. This is like all over the place, right? But it also just highlights your individual performance so strongly. Like, if you want to find the one best player, this is a good format. If you want to find the best duo, the best team, obviously the team format's better. So there's six players left to uh, duke it out for two more spots in the next tournament. Warm-up pass commenced. 15 seconds, and then we go. All in on Granati. I don't know, I don't watch pro. It's a good It's a good chance he, he, he could win. He was struggling a little bit, though, in the previous match, but he was the first to hit finalist. Have yet to see Epos and Wissy. My personal prediction is going to be... I think... Epos and Pack, but I'm really not sure. That's also me kind of wishing that we have someone completely new getting into the mix of things. On board with Epos here, first round of Castle Mania. It's this map with all the wheel clips and a lot of castle dirt roads. The new blocks introduced last year. Very bumpy dirt roads. Trackmania 2020 dirt is kind of known for being very smooth. You don't usually have the car bouncing all over, but these castle roads do change that. So they're a little flat on the inside, so there's turns where you sometimes just launch across the inside corner, sometimes you go wide. Most important turn on this map, though, is coming up here. The 180 drift. Set up wide, get a lot of speed, and then try not to clip the wheels. Equal between Epos and Pack, A wheel apart. Here you can see some players might try to launch across the inside. Good from both. Pack though, with more speed. Epo's inside line, but the bump gets him. And now Pack has a 10th of a lead. This should be his 10 pointer to rights on the final time. 114 18. Good winning pace as well. Can you briefly introduce each competitor? As casual, only name I've heard is Granati. Sure thing. Wissy. Uh, when this game started, I thought Wissy was just a mapper. That, that's what it was at first. And then he turned out to be a very good mapper and then a very good player. Plays steering wheel, same as Granati. And uh, when he started competing competitively, just picked it up very quickly. Really good, consistent player in a couple of days. That's where I see him the most. 
haven't watched too many tournaments he plays otherwise. So I'm also curious to see how Wizzy does. Uh, Epo, same thing. I think he started with this Trekmania. But Epos is just a gamer, all right? Like, he's Super Sonic Legend in Rocket League as well. And just one of the best in this game. Like, he, he's an absolute gamer. So I think he's one of those players that can just pick up and intuitively understand games. And yeah, did the same for Trekmania. Put in several thousand hours and is now one of the best. Pack is an OG. 2016 world champion of Trekmania, eight years ago. Also, I've been in many World Cup Finals and Trackmania Grand League Finals since then. Playing alongside Carl Jr. in the last World Cup, when it was a duo format. They got second place together in the last World Cup, so... He is the current runner-up in the World Cup. Wide from Epos, but he gets this 10-pointer. 1-13-78, is that world record? <laughs> That's close to world record. Let me double-check here, guys. Uh, yeah, no, so... The current world record is a 77 by him, one hour ago. But this is faster than anyone else in the world has driven, except for Epos, and he just drives in a match. Like I said, he's a gamer. Granati, you might know from a couple of the days, has won, I think, 75 around that. Maybe it's more now. And competed in Trekmania since the game came out. This one, in 2020 but has had to learn stadium car. He was, uh, before that, just a snow car player. Also, very unfortunate mistake there. But with the introductions done, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the rounds and cast them. Also, someone said Epos is 16. Can we get a fact check? Is he actually 16, Wizzy, with a mistake? I'd love to know. Because, uh, that is a prodigy right there. He's 24, okay, yeah. The people are mixing up names. Thank you, Ender. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see. It's Epos versus Pack. Drift around the castle. Both get it cleanly, but Epos again just with the flow, the pace. Fast once more. Pack dodging the bumps and gets this nice line, but somehow Epos on the inside tends to actually lose out. I was going to say he wins there, but that's not the case this time. And Pack, it's a nice downhill. 113. 98. He can match the pace as well. Paco is 17. Yeah, we're gonna see Paco later. 17. It's a prodigy. Yeah, good start for Pack and Epos. Already a 10 point gap from them down to Wissi and Granati, who have been struggling. Let's take a look at Granati now. Can he bounce back? This might be one of his better maps. Slow line there for Pack. But he does come back a bit. Still gonna be in last though. Good line from Granati on the dirt. Smoothening out that line with the steering wheel. Such good exit speed. Delaying the gear until you hit the platform. And now across the corner. Epo's daring to risk it a little bit more. Uphill drift, Granati clips and oh, this is not off to a good start for Granati. It's so tilting guys when you play a competition. You put in so much practice. And then, back to back to back, you have rounds that you're just not making it work. And you see your opponents run away, they're gonna be up almost 20 points. It's very hard, mentally then, <coughs> to not be too hard on yourself. We're gonna see this battle once more. Epos and Pack. This time Epos gets the more speed. Can he make his line survive past the castle blocks? Looks like Pack has this one down the hill, 114-14. Can you explain a noob how this World Cup works? Well, right now we're playing to see who gets to go into the full World Cup tournament. This is the playoffs. The top 32 in the regular season are battling for four spots. Two of them are already taken by Masa and Binks, and we're battling for the last two spots. You need to be top two in this match, and then top two in the next match to guarantee yourself a spot. And uh, it's, it's really cutthroat, as I said earlier. Like, the level is insane. Epos just dropped world record, basically, on the previous map. No Carl Jr. this year? He is already qualified through the North American qualifier. So he doesn't need to play this. So World Cup will be 8 players. 
But you can essentially say that world this is World Cup 2, you know? It's just like... The World Cup semi-finals are, um... I think it's in two weeks. And the finals well in two weeks. Who except Carl Muscle and Binks are already qualified? It's, um... Otak, reigning world champion. And the last pre-qualified spot goes to... The winner of XP EVO, which is next weekend. So the winner of the major tournament XP EVO will get the spot. First round of wave control. <laughs> it's one of the more drivable maps. And we again see Epo so fast up front. And finally a good performance for Granati here. Maybe has been able to let go of the nerves and the pressure and annoyance on the previous map. 106.33! Dude, relax! <laughs> relax, bro! That is uh, th uh, fourth world, I should be specific. World record 106.26. One oh six twenty six by Gram, uh, by by Gwen. So insane. Just the precision. And the thing about momentum like this, guys, is when you're feeling it. Like this can carry on. That we've had this in in World Cup matches before, and it's very Carl Junior. Behavior. Carl Junior is the goat of Trackmania. The most winning world champion Trackmania player. If you ever let Carl Jr. get this amount of momentum and flow in a match, like, you're gonna lose. And Epos right now is destroying everybody. He has so much momentum. And he's looking to lock in another 10-pointer here. This is just another day at the practice session for him. And he's not being put under subsequent pressure where he even... Yeah, like, look, it's... Clockwork. Bro. <laughs> ah, bro, this world record. <laughs> like, it's insane. Like, I think this could keep happening. Because, like, dude, he's he's crushing it. It's It reminds me so much of Carl Jr. Peak. Just back to back to back. Non-stop. I wonder, though, if he actually is almost driving too fast. When you're driving a time that surprises you, that can cause nerves as well. We'll see how he handles this one. It's an important round for him. Wallbank strategy. Good crash from Wizzy, I believe, who's struggling a lot in this match. But you have to drive so fast to get any points better than three. That's the thing here. Like, to score even better than four points, you have to beat Pack and Epos, and they're driving world record pace up front, so... Insane to keep up with. They're closer this time around, but Granati hits the pillar, and now... Pack versus Epos. Last couple of turns, Pack making Epos work for this one. Equal before the quarter pipe jump. Maybe Pack lands sooner, more speed. Bug slide the sides. Pack going a little too wide to take it away. And Epos gets another ton. <laughs> Insane. Did Brett not play this World Cup? He didn't, no. You thought Wallbang was not allowed? Well, the developers do everything they can to disincentivize Wallbangs. Like, build maps where they're not faster and stuff. What are we waiting for? Probably a call has been made to pause after this round, since they're not driving, so I'm assuming that's understood by all players but yeah uh, typically they hate wall banks but on this map they found one that works first time watcher am i witnessing history here world record the maps have only been out for 10 days so yes and no uh these world records are you know less important than the points they score since they're playing a knockout tournament. But it's uh, still so impressive to drive a 106.23 in match. Like, that's stupid. 
So the, the I think the biggest piece of history is that Epos is gonna be a name you're gonna hear about in this game for a long time. Do eliminated players get another chance? No. If you lose here, this is already loser bracket. So everyone in this match have already lost the previous match in the tournament. If you lose in loser bracket, you're out. So uh in Norwegian we say uh Vin Elefoshvin, which basically means you gotta win or get lost. <laughs> so yeah. Wallbang, Pack versus Epos. Pack got close last time. But their Epos was driving about 0.4 slower than his uh, previous pace. Now equal. Granati 0.6 behind. Incredible the pace of driving. I think Pack here would score, you know, 10 points back to back against most other players. And yet there's one Blue Jays car just a little bit in front. Card pep jump up. Looks best for Pack here. What a jump. Overtakes the bug slide. Oh, Epos on the inside, but Pack has a better approach, and there the streak has finally ended. Where's the match taking place? The World Cup Finals are in Paris. But this is an online tournament. Have I driven this map? No, I have not. But I can already tell you, and I try to make very clear, these maps are so difficult. Like, crashing on these maps is... Well, driving a crash-free run on this map is already extremely hard. But a crash free run will typically be like plus two seconds of what they drive up front, plus three. To keep it clean and do every single part as precise as they do is another level. Yeah. So, um, just know like what we're witnessing, it's so difficult. It's not like driving a couple of the day map at all. And especially this map, Secrets, it has so many shortcut jumps that you have to do. You have to get a precise quarter pipe here, and if you get enough speed, then you can make this jump across the scenery and gain some time, and there's many parts like this. It's also a very hard risky finish on this map. Epos has made a mistake, by the way. So the onslaught will have a small pause here. Bug slide now, packing Granati. I think Granati is really feeling the pressure seeing Epos and Pack run away with it. Has to score a 10 here. Low jump looks good. Lands the ramp as well very nicely. Good setup for the dirt. Now the beam needs to get across with good speed to make this platform. That's a very nice landing. Oh, a little bit wide. I'm scared for his ending speed here, actually. I hope this will be enough for Granati. Lands on the platform and can get the risky finish. Great time, 106.64. Let me also blow my nose real quick, guys. I really hope my nose would stop. It's hard to cast when you, uh, <laughs> when you're a little sick, but I'm trying my best here. Epo's back into the fray as Wizzy's made a mistake. So tough for Wizzy to go up against this field, and regardless if Wizzy can make this or not, like, getting to this stage in the World Cup is so insane. You're essentially, at that point, top 16 world, you know? So, um, it's not, it's not at all a bad showing, can be very proud, even though here it's going very badly so far. Like, everyone wants to play their best match, but the, the level here is just stupid high. Epos in the lead, Carling that Granati, Granati more speed onto the beam it looks like. Better landing as well, what a line. Last jump now between the trees, you need to get enough speed to land this ramp. Granati on the inside and snipes Epos. So important for Granati. Two time pointers. And Pack getting last year is great for Granati. He gains seven points towards Pack and is slowly but surely closing that gap. 54 now to 68. Was he top five last World Cup with Stifts? Yeah. No, he, he's insanely good. Hope to see uh, see him come alive a bit here. Not sure which maps he excels at, but it's just so hard with... Uh, well, one could be Tilt, and two could be 
the maps being brutal when you're not 100% on your game. Pack in the lead. He might have something to say about Granati's comeback plans. Great line from Pack. Good setup for the quarter pipe. Just perfectly calculating that trajectory. Point three ahead. A little bit wide here, though. Reels himself back in. Granati slightly off the pipe. Does Pack hold on to this, or will it be another Epos 10 pointer? Pack looks good here for the jump. 106. On what basis do they choose maps? Only campaign maps or new maps or what exactly? Uh, they have maps built for each tournament. Like you see, these are called Trackmania World Cup 24 Secrets. All the maps are built and revealed just a bit before the tournament starts. In this case, it was 10 days. So they uh, have 10 days to learn these maps and all the lines on them. Pack with a mistake in the start. And so you kind of have to pick. It's it's like in Pokemon. <laughs> you have to pick. Do you want like one level 100 Pokemon? Or do you want like a more balanced team comp? You don't have time to get them all to level 100, you know? So some players will just put a lot of practice to get like one star map. Some will go more balanced. Etc, etc. Good round for Wizzy here. Up in first. Oh, nice line too. Epos though better across the dirt. Equal. Good commit. Looks like he has a lot of speed for the last ramp. Maybe too fast. Has to go for the safe finish. But will get a six points at the very least. Oh no, he will not. Pack with the risky. Gets four. Is Epo's keyboard? No, he is uh, controller. The last jump seems to be the hardest. Sammy, I think what it is is that if you are too fast. You, you get a worse jump on the next to the risky. Like, it's very hard to adapt your speed for that last part. Do I think of going pro? Guys, I would have, and I'm not kidding, zero chance. I would probably lose to Wizzy here every round. The, the level of pro track mania is indescribably high on tournaments where the maps are known beforehand. Like, if you have a tournament where you learn the maps then and there, like a couple of the day, I sometimes have my bright days, right, where I, I understand it quickly. If you give the pros 10 days to practice, dude, I'm losing. I'm losing so hard. <laughs> so, uh, so the answer is uh, a resounding no. But I love watching Project Mania. Did well in the previous tournament? Yeah, I played with Rayson, so we got top... Top 13, I think it was, out of 130 teams. So it wasn't it wasn't horrible, but it's just also like the that was a fast learning tournament, and I, I do not see myself sitting and practicing 10 days in a row on World Cup maps. But yeah, Wizzy looking a lot better on Roll Cage here. Up near the front with Epos. Such a good bouncy line. I uh, want to make sure I'm not taking for granted that you guys know these maps by now. Type 1 in chat if you're watching this map for the first time. We can maybe go through it a bit. Pack with a great ending. Sniping away Wizzy, but here comes Epos! A lot of ones in chat. Okay, so let's first catch you guys up to speed with the world record. That was a 114.10. The world record is a... 113.82 by Gwen. 113.82. This is the most drivable map in the map pack. The map with or one of, I say one of, uh, wave control maybe, but one of the most. You see the least mistakes on this map. But a map like Spin Off, which we're gonna see after, is way more mistake heavy. A lot of technical parts and a lot of these off-road dirt parts. The mapper Carluki wanted to use. 
Uh, this new block can have you drive off-road on it a lot of places. Big crash for Epos, but he somehow doesn't lose too much from that. Only point one. <laughs> Accidental wall bang. You have this wood fling here. You need a lot of speed out of it to make this jump. They make it look easy, but it's not, I promise you. Low line, and then the sausage turn around the tire. One person fall lots off. I believe that was pack. And then here, you bump across the grass. If you get a flat landing, the tires will spend more time decelerating on a penalty surface. That's why they try to land bumpy. And then you have the last part. You go into this slalom around the tire, jump up next to the tire, stack, and into the finish. Great round for Wizzy, and I think his first 10-pointer. Happy for Wizzy that he shows up. Would you have gone pro if you hadn't concentrated on consecration? I would have tried. But going pro is often not just a choice. You actually have to be good enough to make it work. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think I realized like the time and effort and like, I don't know if I would enjoy it as much as I just like Trekmania at, at the level I'm at. But yeah, those that have watched for a long time remember Trekmania Open Grand League 2019. I was competing. Is it 120 points? Yeah. Epo's crossing the 100 mark. In last, but passes Pack. And this is important for Granati. Pack is now almost guaranteed last place in this round. Can Granati get first and try to close that gap? He's kind of running out of time in the match. There's not that much driving left to be done before the players approach 120, so. Big opportunity, Granati. The bumpy line comes through, the reactor down, and now they're going into the hole. And then that ending slalom section. Looks good for Granati. Still Wizzy, though, trying to deny here. And same for Epos, but Granati gets the most speed out of all of them. Dodges the tires and gets into the finish. 1-14-2. And that outcome does remain, so... Granati getting ever so slightly closer. 70-93. to It becomes 80-96. There's still time. There is still time. If you're a Granati believer, there is still time. But he cannot really afford many more big mistakes here. And he has to kind of hope that Pack gets passed by the others as well. Wissing now with a slow start. Good air break for Granati. Oi, oi, oi. Ooh, has to release. Oh, this is a little slow now in the start. Great. Reaction times and adaptation. We can see that it has cost him 0.3 almost of a second. That one's pack. It's the player he wants to beat the most right now. Onto the dirt. This is a great time for pack. Really fast splits being driven. Round the tire. Not the best here for Granadi. Up and on with Epos. As they now go for the bumpy line. Looks so bumpy, shaky, and it actually is slow for Pack. He gets caught up to a lot. Epos now with a chance at this round that he didn't have previously. Lands good on the platform. Close on the dirt. Less speed here, though, after the slalom and Pack should hold on to this lead. As it looks, 1-14-2, the winning time. And uh, the gap that Granati tried to close sort of just gets completely nullified. 106 to 84. Can you explain the tournament format? We play to 120 points, and then after they reach 120, it is finalist mode. The way that works is that you have to win one round. You can reach 120 points, then get second place in 10 rounds in a row and still not have won the match. You have to get to 120 and get first place in a round. And then you are successfully qualified. Top two here, qualify, bottom two are out. The same as Bong Cup, yeah. I just, I hate comparing it to Bong Cup, but it is something that people know with finalist mode. <laughs> Which is very funny to me. 
Like people, people go like, oh yeah, the World Cup format is just like Bomb Cup for real. It's it's really funny. This map is wild, guys. It is called Spinoff because it's built in a way that rewards spins in many different formats. There are parts that are faster backwards. There are parts that are faster when you do a spin, like the ice spin we saw earlier. Just a crazy map throughout. Here you have a bumper. You bump up onto this block. It looks a bit like deep dip for one block, and then you go onto the grass again. Now you have the backwards part here. Spin around the ice, backwards across the booster so you don't have to slow down. And then you go forwards again down the angle loop. Epos with great pace up front. Wizzy in second as well. And Epos here with the first place could get to that 120 mark and activate Bomb Cup mode. And he gets passed by Granati. Wizzy actually almost lasts there. 108.30 is a very good time. 107 is the world record. 107.8 by Gwen, I think. So now Epos has a chance to close this out. In finalist mode, got the red number on the car. Just needs one first place to go through to the next match. Glenn has every world record. Basically, we see Granati fall off the map, by the way, packed for the mistake. And Wissy as well. Epos is one second ahead of everyone. This is a very hard map to drive. And especially with the pressure, is he gonna realize this? He's. Alone up front. And Pack is looking to get second now. Putting him at 115 if that remains. I think Pack is not at all interested in risking here. Knowing that he can look very good to be the second finalist. So yeah, Pack is safing. Pack has made the call. He's losing 0.10 per attack point. Like he is absolutely just gonna try to safe this in. And so Epos will go through. As the first player, I don't know if many people predicted this. I wonder if there's going to be an economic collapse in Twitch chat. Epos, the first to qualify. That is at a great time too. 108.19, guys. That is uh, top seven world. Top seven world. So yeah, really impressive player. Can't wait to see more of him. So fun that he uh, he shows up big in this tournament. One more spot left for grabs. Pack here needs first or second this round to get finalist. Oh, but he falls off the map, does he? Oh, he does. Big respawn. And this is actually the exact outcome Granati could hope for. If he gets first here and Pack gets last, that would stall... At the very minimum, one more round and oh, now I'm not sure what place Wissy and Pack are gonna get, but Dornati looks like he is bound for first. So 104 to 119. We've seen crazier comebacks before, guys. It is possible. But it's gonna take a big effort. Spin-off is Pac's worst map as well. But that was a big theme yesterday. That he couldn't really drive this map too cleanly. So Granati will have a pretty good chance at this. What's the hardest map? It's this one. So 119 to 104. Wissy at 75. Not much of a contender yet. That would probably be the craziest comeback I've ever seen if he can make this work. Oh, good spin though. It's in the mix. Pack in third. Only needs to finish for finalists. What Pack can try to do here though is risk and get first place to deny the other's points. That's going to be the uh, only reason for him to drive fast here. Equal to Granati in the ice slide. Very good round here to watch. All of them are in contention still. Halfway through the map, that's a rarity. Four spin off, Wissy. And Granati pulling out of pack as he makes a small mistake. Nothing too decisive. 0.4. The backwards part. 
Looks like they all have about equal speed. Pac-Man becoming a bit closer. Gunnati versus Wissy. It's the battle. Can Gunnati get this 10-pointer? Wizzy releasing late. We'll have less speed than Gernotti. The low jump, perhaps, to snipe Gernotti. Doesn't work out for him. Gernotti takes 10. And again, it's really the perfect outcome for Gernotti. So he's put himself in a spot where he has 114. Pack is finalist. And I believe we only... No, we're going to the next map. We're going to the next map. Castlemania. Okay. The thing about this map that we saw earlier, Pack and Epos were driving so well, and Gernani was crashing a lot on this map. And now Gernani gets a new chance of this, and he has to basically win two in a row. From what we saw from Wissy's pace, it wasn't clear <coughs> if Wissy could deny a round. So Pack could be a, basically a straight up 1v1 with Gernani. If Pac wins this, he's through it to the tournament. If Granada denies, then we'll see what happens. Double finalist. Oh, Granada slows down on the landing. I think he landed badly. Maybe even hit the wall. Wasn't too clear what happened. Now it's Wizzy versus Pac. Granada one second behind. But Wizzy is currently leading this one. So let's not count him out yet. Better gear up for Wizzy. Marginally in Pack Clips. Pack Clips the wheel. And another one. Granati's gonna pass him. Just for good measure. And actually, not just good measure. If Granati gets second this round, that means he gets finalist. So, Pack here, if he can deny Granati, he will be way better off. He's gonna try to risk for this. <gasps> but he doesn't get the drift right. He does not get the drift right. And this gap is too big to close. If Granati drives a proper ending, Granati will get to a double finalist spot in the wildest way possible. And let's take note of Wissy's pace here. He's driving a clean round. What's the final time going to be? 1.14.6. Based on what we know, a little too slow to deny Pac or Granati on peak pace. Good luck to both. Here we go, guys. It's going to be Pac or Granati. Moving on to the tournament. The other is out. Important for Granati to fix this mistake. It was this jump right here where he touched the wall a bit, I think. Now it does not happen. Straightens out the car, but a little bit too late and loses some speed across that straight. Point two now to pack the difference. And pack is on to a very clean lap. Granati into the wall. And the gap is half a second. You have to. Oh no, he clips the wheel! You have to imagine that pack. No! Another wheel clip! Oh my castle mania. Oh, there's a reason the pros don't like this map. The wheel clips lose you so much speed. <gasps> Granati wheel clips. Like you see, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's like. Get this out of the eSport circuit, please. We have another chance, though. Both players, I think, have clipped far too much. And Wissy gets another 10. Wissy's at 101. <laughs> Wissy's at 101. <laughs> Holy... Here we go. Clean round, please. So sad if this gets decided by wheel clips. Clean start for all three. This time it's packed with the weaker first dirt part. Note that every player, even if they play with the interface off, will still see the number on the, their car. Pack will still know he was third in that checkpoint, now second. So even if you want to just focus on your driving, you cannot help but see the number and know where you are in the field. And it's Wissy leading the two finalists before we get to a very important part. No wheel clips, please. Pack me with a slight slowdown and a bump. You can see that coming into effect here. Flicking late and Wissy once more up and first. But 
This lead is hard to hold on to. You have that decisive 180 drift here. Any clip here and you lose so much pace, but Wizzy with a half a second lead on the 2 5 list is gonna deny them again, it looks like. And he's building up some momentum. He's coming back alive. He's seeing the hope, the light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe there is a chance here. Has to keep it clean in the ending, though. Just this difference is all that keeps him alive in the match. If Pac passes him, that's game 114 10. That's great pace. 111. He was 40 points down. He only needs to close 10 more points, guys. He was 40 points behind earlier. And, and he has so much momentum now. The others are kind of shaky. He has nothing to lose. This is so interesting. The, the, the psychology in this match right now. So interesting. Wissy in the start gets it the best as well this time around. Has to adapt his drift a little bit. The problem for Wissy is if he crashes once, the match is over. Pack hits the wall. Gernotti versus Wissy now. Is it Pack that falters first under pressure? Wissy could save him. Uphill drift. Whoa, so close to wheel clipping. Great air brake to prevent the car from bouncing out on the dirt. Straightening out. It's steering wheel versus steering wheel. The 180 drift. Granati with a great opportunity now. Great drift by Wizzy. Great drift by Wizzy. Take it over. The dirt bumps. Who gets the dust? Wizzy maintaining his lead. A little bit wide, perhaps. Granati's gonna full send. Granati's gonna full send. Wizzy holds on. He's finalist. <laughs> Yo, no way. He's right there with them. One round now to close. <laughs> we have a match. Triple finalists. Let's go. I think everyone knows who they're rooting for right now. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. You have your pre-favorite. This is the craziest comeback I've ever seen. If he makes it happen. If he makes it happen, like we got a... Take a bow. Take a bow. This is insane. <laughs> you don't give up. You don't give up. This is crazy. It's wave control. A map that we saw him come alive a bit on earlier. But also, it has to be said, a map Pack was very quick at. Pack drove 106.7, I believe it was earlier. Great pace. Here we go. This is the final round of the match. One player moves on, two are eliminated from the tournament. Incredible performance by all three. Only one can make it. Who is going to step up to the task right now? First couple of drifts down into the water pool. Good speed by Wizzy. Can he maintain it across the platform? Yes, he can. Out onto the water edge and around. Waiting for the water bounce now. Pack building up a bit of a lead by the looks of it. Wall bang versus no wall bang. They all slam the wall and adopt their mind thereafter. Pack point one ahead of both. The other finalists. Who goes for the most speed out of the isolate here? Wizzy gets a good booster, it looks like. Does he dare to push through? Pack still in first. Positions remain unchanged. We're getting into the ending now. Bob Slay. And then that sharp turn down into the water pool. Wizzy almost passing Garotti, but it crashes out. It will not be the dream run. It will not be him. Can Garotti make anything happen in the ending? He has to. Pack has a point fifteen lead before the bug slide. Jumps high, maybe a bit too high. Pack looks like he can take it here with the last bug slide. He gets it beautifully around the corner. And what a time to close. What a time to close. 106.37. Like we mentioned, that is point one behind the world record. Driven earlier in this match. So under such insane pressure, Pack delivers. But guys, what a game. What a game. Incredible by all three. Uh, all four. But especially here at the ending. Wow. That was, that was tense. And it's still not like... You, you win this game if you're Epos and, and Pack. You still have to play one more match now to guarantee your spot in the um in the tournament finals semifinals and stuff next week two weeks from now should specify wow take a breather take a breather Whew. that was crazy 
<laughs> that was crazy, guys. Let's pull up the bracket so you guys are up to speed. Um, here. That was insane. All right. Can you guys see this? It's gonna be bright. White mode browser, I'm sorry. A light mode. Here you have the match that we just saw. Epos and Pack are advancing, and now they're facing Mime and Pasito Paco. Mime and Pasito Paco were in the winner bracket final, and then they lost yesterday. So now this is the match. And uh, yeah, these, th this is gonna be insane. Let me go one step back here. I misclicked this website. It's a bit new to me. This is gonna be insane. In the finals, in the very finals of this playoffs, Binks and Massa are already waiting. They have won every match. They're playing this one just for seeding. Basically, everyone that gets to this match will make it to the tournament. But what they're playing for afterwards is that if you win this match, you get to pick your opponents in the World Cup semifinal. It's like, oh, that guy was a bit slow. I want to play against him. I want to play against him and him and him. You have to pick your opponents. <laughs> Which is an insane advantage to give the seed. It's not like, oh, you get first map pick. No, no, no. You get to pick your opponent. What? <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> so, yeah. Grandi is annoyed because of uh, Castlemania. Yeah, I really hope they don't have maps like that. Uh, in future tournaments. I think Castlemania is a... Uh, it's an exciting map, but it's just the problem that the best line is often to risk a wheel clip. And so you're just left with like... Yeah. Just this really unsatisfying <laughs> mistakes that happen. The gear? Yeah, there's a really difficult gear on Castlemania. I can maybe show it while we're waiting. Here. <laughs> Can you please explain the format again? I don't get it. Uh, you drive races to the finish line. You try to score points. And you score till you reach 120. And then you have to win a round to go through. You have to get first place in a round after reaching 120 points. There's a gear... Not here, sorry. I mean, there's a few things that can happen, but... One of the most important parts is... Yeah, it's in two turns from now. Right here. You can speed slide on this grass. But if you do, the gear up will happen in a very bad place. So you wait until you reach the platform before you let the car gear up. That's one thing. And then sometimes when you cross these edges, you get a slowdown and you drop the gear. Can also happen right here. Am I sick? Yeah, I'm a little bit sick. I'm sorry about the sniffing. Sorry, chat. And then this drift is the most important one. To get such good exit speed without dropping third gear. When do the maps change? They play the same maps uh, all tournament. And we have the match server up, guys. Let's get in. And get a prediction going, get a prediction going, this is sick. <laughs> Do you guys know the players now? Do you want to run down once more? This is kind of a battle between... Like, the new prodigies versus the, the old guard, alright? Pack that we saw just now. 2016 world champion of the game. Eight years ago. Uh, Pasito Paco here is 17. So he would have been 9 when Pac was Trackmania World Champion. Pasito Paco started playing the game when he was like 13, 14 when it came out. He's a, he's a young prodigy and he's really good. Where is Pasito Paco from? Uh, Hungary. And then Epos, another one of these uh, Trekmania Zoomers, started with a new game. Mime has been playing for a long time, but he's also not that old. I think Mime's like 22? <laughs> I 
I think it's 22, something like that. What does ITB mean? It's just an eSport organization. Into the breach. YouTube chat is consistently dabbing. I love to see that. This Gamba is hard? Yeah. I'm going to make my prediction here. Whoa. Lower my chair. I'm going to make my prediction. <clears throat> and... It's, it's tough, guys. It's so tough. It's kind of... I'm, I'm going to say Epos. I still think he's he's young though in the sense of playing matches like this and maybe lacking the experience of something like pack match experience. I'm really tempted to say Epos Pusitofaku. I think I will. Okay, I'm gonna say Epos Pusitofaku, but I, I think I could be wrong. Paco has really impressed me. Oh, shit. Just watch Paco drive for a bit. Does fatigue play a big part? I think the main thing is, is your own psychology when you drive. I would say skill-wise, the players are very evenly matched. But that's what I'm talking about, like when you get good momentum, for example. If you drive round after round and things just work, it's so much easier than if you crash and crash and you're falling behind. Uh, the players, you know, they can see each other on their splits and stuff, but they can't interact with each other. Ultimately, the time you get is just your own driving. And oftentimes, the main thing that stops you from getting the time you want is your own head. So I think that's the hardest part. Stabilizing after crashing three times when you thought you were going to drive a perfect match with no crashes, etc, etc. Gwen not in? No, Gwen got knocked out earlier. It was an insane match. Gwen uh, got knocked out by Grenadian pack. Is this the last race? There's two more matches. Yo, yeah, Scope, thank you. When normal content after after the matches. My Shadow Kans are playing now. Now this I mean there's even more good players that, that aren't playing the tournament. Why is Bren not playing? I <laughs> I'll be honest. I think I think he's just happy. <laughs> he's just chilling. He's in Australia surfing right now. Living life. Living off of the deep dip trust fund, you know? Like, at that point, you can just enjoy life. You don't have to be slogging through World Cup when you already want it. Bren is protesting? Oh. Well, enjoying life is, is a... I guess, close to that. <sighs> We're waiting for... Uh, oh, all oh, players are here. First map, Castlemania. Second, Wave Control. Third, Secrets. Four, Roll Kitchen. Spin-off map five is crazy. Uh, that's the hardest map. Basically, under the most pressure. Feel a little bad for the players, but... Alas, all maps will be played. Let's take a look. We're starting. Starting on this map. How do you get into this tournament? You have to play the Trekmania monthly competitions to build up um, circuit points. And then the top 32 players with circuit points get into the tournament. So, uh... Some people have done it, gotten, gotten enough points just in like one tournament if they do really well. Others have played like 10. How many rounds per map? It's five rounds per map. Or four? I actually haven't kept track. I think it's five though. But let's see. We are starting.
just a quick five second warm up. Get your prediction in. Mine is gonna be that Epos wins this match, but it's honestly hard to tell, guys. I could be wrong. I don't wanna, you know, lose you all your channel points. Here we go. Epos is the world record holder on this map. 113.77. If you see a time under 114, that's really fast. But I think we should start by taking a look at Mime and Pasito Paco. Because you might not have seen um, seen these players in matches before. Mime is driving with the Mogging uh, car tag. And his teammate, Pasito Paco, has uh, Mewing as his uh, <laughs> car tag. <laughs> Both from the same org, but they're, they're playing against each other. It's the same eSport org. Supporting them. But it's kind of cute. It's kind of cute. It's like having matching outfits, you know, with your with your best friend. Alas, first important sharp drift of this one. Ooh, Mime gets it good, but Pusita Paco has to release Pack catching up. Has a better gear into the dirt, and that's going to be an overtake. It's the castle wall, and same for Epos, and Paco is wide. What's happening? A little bit of nerves, I think. Mime, the only player with a clean run. We'll lock in 10 points. Pack gets 6. Epos gets 4 and Paco gets 3. 114.02 winning time. Only like 2500 2, from world record. But yeah, you get 10 for first, 6 for second, 4 for third, and 3 for fourth. You play rounds over and over, try to reach 120 points. And then after that, you have to win one round after reaching 120 to secure your spot into the next match. Top two move on. It's uh, understandable once you've seen it a few times. Second round, we see Pac now in the lead. Uh, still hitting the wall a bit. I think uh, previous match was really, really hard for him on this map. <laughs> With all the pressure, you know you're back against the ropes, double finalist, and you just keep clipping the wheels here, but finally gets through. And Paco's on a banger. This pace is really sick. Paco on keyboard, by the way. Same for mine, both keyboard players. So this is literally just tap, tap, tap. Good drift setup. Keeps the third gear, but clips the wheel. Ah, the pain. The pain. The wheel clips on Castlemania. You hear about them a lot, but there you see one. Eternal sadness. As, uh, looks like Pack gets this 10 pointer and very close for the six. Epos gets that by a hair. But yeah, uh, Paco was 0.2 out of Pack, so he was on 113 pace. How many qualified for them? Top two. At least this is the fir first map. This is the worst scenario because it means you play it twice. Yeah, it could come back again at the end of the rotation. Oh, big mistake by Pasito Paco. Epos haven't really gotten the momentum going yet. But I'm not sure if this is his strongest map or one of his strongest. But when this guy gets momentum, he is flying. And it's kind of interesting, like we see, oh, wheel clip for Epos. We see Mime take lines to intentionally avoid the wheel clip. And the players that go across the corner, like one wheel hovering in the air across the corner, always gain close to a tenth on them there. But that's kind of Mime's strategy, he's willing to sacrifice that time. Like if you survive, great for you, but he's just going for consistency. And together with Pac, he is in the lead of the match, and if he wins this 1v1, he will take the lead from Pac, but oh, that's gonna be tough. Pac gets the wheel clip though, and it's... Bro, it's it's not even interesting to cast. It's just like, oh, he got a wheel clip. He got a wheel clip. There's a wheel clip. I, I want to talk about the driving, all right? I want to talk about the driving. I don't want to talk about castle edges. But if you were living in the middle century and you um, built your castle walls like this, I mean, no one would ever intrude your castle. These are rock solid walls. 
Now my half minimum I can start. So stop complimenting the consistency. Epos into the wall as well. These are understandable mistakes. It's just very annoying here, this corner. Where you can gain so much if you do what Paco just did. Here as well. So much so that you kind of have to go for it. The 10 pointers are too valuable and what a setup for Paco. A little bit late on the no slide flick. Paco versus Pack. Gonna be a word salad to cast this. <laughs> but it's a good bummy one. Wider line for Paco getting across without too much trouble. Good speed setup. Does he make it though? Oh, that's tight. Bit too wide and Pac wins the round by two hundredths. That's very close. Oh my god, I just got a very cute emote from the hype train. I'm gonna be honest, I, I, I cannot remember a single hype train emote that I've gotten. I just wish they made them better. You know? Like, the, but there's no Twitch hype train emote that's like, whoa, I want that one. I've just kind of... <laughs> They're all... All over the place. Map 2, wave control. This one has a lot of water. Which means, uh... Wet tires. Difficult to drive. Go in and out of pools a lot. Why does Paco have an Albanian skin if he is from hung Hungary? Uh, some players have the setting on that when you spectate them, every map it just rolls a different car skin. So it looks as though Mime has changed car skin here, but it's just a randomly chosen country. Right now it's Angola. And Paco is from Azerbaijan, so th that's what you're seeing. It's just a, a randomly chosen car skin. Intentional wall hit on this map. It's one of the only places where players actually want to crash. Set up their car. Then you have... Sharp turn here. Go low next to the fence, into the bobsleigh. And you try to hit this drop down with no air time. Down into the water, you wall hug the plastic of it. Followed by... Two sharp turns, quarter pipe jump, and a bug slide. Mime versus Pack, 1v1. Looks like Mime has it under control, 106.57. Good winning time. Do the players have coaches that help them read the tracks? No. <laughs> like, they've, they've studied the maps for 10 days. So they know the routes. And they know, uh, they remember everything. 38 to 38, Mime and Pack, so consistent. And my prediction was Epos and Paco, who are currently last and third in the match. But uh, luck can still happen. This was one of Epos's best maps in the previous match. See if he can find his flow. That's a good line, good water bounce. Looks like they try to hit the first A in Trackmania. Is where a lot of players opt to crash. Ooh, wide setup. Could get a lot of speed here, Epo. So yeah, look at that. Zoom. <laughs> Flying past Paco who has to let off to avoid the crash. And now this is going to be a good time. Paco's still in second, though. But yeah, very curious what the final time here is going to be. Ooh. Hesitation a little bit up front from Epos. Still a good line. Both of them... Doing everything smoothly here, no mistakes, 106.68. Isn't Virgil technically a sumer? I refuse to identify with the term. <laughs> I think zoomer is, is not just the year you are born in, but the language you speak. Like, you don't hear me casting like, wow. Going into the next round here, a bit of a Ohio start for Pasito Paco, but we have Mime up in front with a skibbity wrist line over the sand. 
you know? Like, it's it's more about how you speak and how who you are than, like, when you're born. <laughs> so, I, I refuse to identify with the Zoomer. Thank God I just got an ad. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. We can, uh, we can talk proper. Oh, that's a big bonk for mine. Whoa, pack, hang on. This is so fast. Guys, this is really fast pace from pack. Could be world record pace. Does he get the bug slide? 106.26. What's that on the leaderboard? I think that beats Epos. I'm very sorry. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's uh, it's third place on the leaderboard. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, two hundreds off. Very nice time though for pack fifty-one points. And I wanna a credit. Oh, that's. I think I'm a mistake for mine now. Crash again, yeah. That this is where you see a lot of packs match experience come through. Whew. Like, Paco and Mime have had all day to prepare. Epos and Pack have been through so many matches to get here. And Pack had a very stressful previous match, and now he's coming back just driving very consistently in this one. But in this round that I try to compliment it, we have Epos and Paco faster up front, wide for Paco. Epos gonna extend this lead. Jumping very far though. Second place is anyone's game right now. First place to Epos, second to Paco. Is this the playoffs that we're already pretty deep into the season? I thought it just started. Yeah, there was matches yesterday too. Synergy. Uh, I didn't cast those. So there's like a huge, you know, round of 32, round of 16, round of 8, and so on and so on. Didn't cast any of those matches, but we're casting today. Is this pre-recorded? No. It's very close now, though. Epos has caught up to mine. Paco's still trailing a little bit. So we're going on to secrets. How many matches left today? It's uh, this one and one more. To two matches. Orange 25, you're a zoomer, not Gen Alpha, but a zoomer. Uh, I disagree. It's um, it's a state of mind. And I would, I would agree with Gen Z, but I wouldn't say I'm a zoomer. Those are different things. Those are different things, chat. Like, you can be a boomer without being a baby boomer, you know? It's a state of mind. Anyway, first round of secrets, this map has a lot of shortcut jumps. You're gonna see roads that you thought the players were going to, and then psych, we're not. As uh, there's many paths here. And every secret route you take is usually faster. Oh, uh, unfortunate for mine. He goes with a very interesting line. There's a very obvious demonstration of this right here with the beam that you jump onto instead of the road. And then across the scenery, and this gains a lot of time. And then one final secret, one final shortcut between the trees. Very hard to get enough speed for this jump. Pac and Paco both make it 106.50 from Posita Paco. It's a great time. 106.33 is world record, I think. Yeah, 106.33. And Paco now coming back into the match. So the leaderboard is closing in. Pack just turned halfway. 61 out of 120 he needs. To get to finalist mode. Everybody making the start. Good round so far. Let's check out Pack now a little bit in the back. Less speed than the others. And yo! What is this? What is this autoplay? Iconic. 
iconic sound. Press one if you've heard this before. Top three. All next to each other. A little bit less speed for Pasito Paco getting caught into by Epos. Mime with a great dirt line. Does he make the beam? Yes, he does. Is he dumping too far almost? Good air break to secure the landing. Now here comes Pasito Paco back with more speed on the next turn. Epos in third pack coming into the frame as well. Pack going wide. It's Pasito Paco ahead of Mime. Top two. The bottom two players get the most points, meaning we get an even closer leaderboard, guys. Forever, forever, forever. Next round. Yeah, this map's insane if you haven't seen it. Wow, dude, 54, 53, 55. Crazy leaderboard. Really, all proving that they oh deserve the spot. Keeping everything so close. What a what a bug slide from Epos. Pack crashing out too. And at this, Mino has a chance to get almost back up to first. It's only first on the first map. Because you guys, I'm a bit sick. My my nose is very runny. I'm gonna blow my nose after this. Round is over. Can Epos catch up to Mime? It's a very unlikely scenario. Mime will make the jump. Ten no! Ten points for him. Position remain. One second. We are back. Very nice pack at 69 points after that round. Still holding on. It, it's literally a toss-up right now. I, I couldn't tell you who's driving better or worse. I feel like every player's had their mistakes, their strong maps. Mime and Pac on the first one. And then Epos and Paco did really well in the previous and here. to make it an even game. Better jump here for Mime, getting a bit closer to Paco. Oh, small wheel clip, but this one doesn't cost him any speed. Oh, Mime into the wall in the dirt. And now Paco has a chance for a very important tan. Epo's gonna challenge it. Can he slow down his car appropriately to not over jump? This ramp looks good. Epo sniping the tan away. And Paco's made a mistake, but it's still enough for a second. Bug slide from Epo so close every time. Yeah, he goes for this insane inside line. We saw Gwen do something similar. And it doesn't seem to gain that much because the speed that you can get from the wide line across the next straight. Mime DNF. Oi. Wow, they've leveled this out so much. Let me uh let me skip this one. It works for me, but it works for you guys. What a song. Pulp Remix. Round one of Roll Cage. One of the more drivable maps. Just gotta avoid the wheel clips. We had one in the start. That was Epos. Unfortunate. Pasito Paco traveling the world right now, going to Argentina with his car skin for this one. Still hasn't properly loaded for me, those the skin he's meant to have. Driving very fast right now. Getting the nice lines through the grass reactor part. Good drift, catching the wood early. Oh, mine a little bit better here though. Catching it better. About equal before the second off-road part. 
Across more penalty grass. Now we're on to the Sausage Drift. And one final proper off-road part before the ending. Bouncy line here. Out equal. I mean, Paco has a chance to make this happen, but mine looking like the favorite going into the ending. Last slalom around the tire. And then jumping into the finish. Can Paco hold on to second place? Yes, he can. 1.14.05, good winning time. It's uh, a little over two tons off of world record. Holby with 61 months resub, by the way. Thank you so much, Holby. <laughs> Ridiculous. Hearts and chat for Holby. One of my longest running subs, guys. Thank you for the, the, the five full years and now a month of support. Insane. Round two of roll cage. Epos crashed out early, but look at the score, guys. Seven, everyone within seven points. Such a good loser bracket final. Pace as well, consistency wise. It's Paco with the best start. Still has the speed advantage against Pac. And a car length is the final outcome of all of that. One car length lead. It's diminishing though as Pack is approaching ever closer. Great drift by Pack to overtake. Good line on the off road. Paco getting the better of the bounce. Dead equal. Different lines. Paco going for a much more inside approach to the hole. And Pack is a wheel behind now, but Pack with more speed. This could be Pack's to win. Eats the gear, and Paco takes it after all that is said and done. I wish they have different um, different names. It's a little too close. <sighs> Would they win a couple of the day easily? Uh, Pack has over ten percent couple of the day win rate, and it used to be twenty percent. He just outright one of the best players in the game, but he doesn't play couple of days. Like, they only, like, the only... <laughs> Pack typically only plays the game now for competitions that have prize pools. Mime and Paco you might have seen a couple of days, but not too often. Epos as well. All for two tons of a second. Paco driving a banger run right now. No mistakes, and he drove a 113 the last round, and this is... I'd say even faster. Oh, but why though? Did he hit twice? He crashed twice and that drops him down, I think, four spots. Epos versus Mime for the round win. Better landing for Mime. Slalom coming through. Mime still up front. Doesn't eat the gear. And he's gonna win the round. 114. Yeah, Paco was on Rodak Pace. But it's so interesting, right? Again, you have the two players at the bottom of the scoreboard scoring best, and look at what's gonna happen now. <laughs> 87, 87, 83, 82. They play to 120. <laughs> like, ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Different line on the start from mine. I don't think that was on purpose. It was not, and he has to take the safe route. So he's out of the contention for this one. Paco looking like a monster on this map, guys. Still driving quickly. Epo's eating the gear. Point three. Mime DNF cannot finish. Too far behind. Just gonna mental reset for the next round. Pack now with a bit less speed. This jump's gonna be a lot harder. One second behind. I think we're going to turn our attention to Paco up front. See how he closes this one out. A little bit slow there through the sausage drift. Didn't get the exact gear he wanted to, but that is such a good bouncy line. Straightening out, not sliding, and keeping the wheels in the air over the penalty surface. Gains about a tenth to the others. Really clean execution here. 
releasing a bit from a hill. Yeah. 114.2. Another 10 points for Paco, who's... I mean, he's getting dangerously close to, to leading the match. Is he leading the match? Yeah, he was like 30 points down earlier. Now he's in the lead. <laughs> Insane. Why would a DNF instead of just finishing? The finish timeout is 10 seconds. So if you're far behind, you, uh, more than 10 seconds, you, you literally cannot finish. And now, guys, if you haven't seen this map, it is the wildest one in the map pack. Spin-off. It's less about things you've seen so far, like reactor booster, fast driving and stuff. And just about being the best Trek Mania Acrobat. You are rewarded for spinning in many ways. Start backwards. Here you turn the car because there's the booster. You can drive forwards. It's faster. Jump low to the quarter pipe. Here the best way to maneuver this is an ice spin. Straightening out and then turning with icy tires. Here in the water on the bug slide, you can actually drive backwards. But most people flick out of it, drive forwards, and then do a spin to land down here. And out of all of this, Mime is doing a great job demonstrating how to do it, but it's very hard to do this. It's a very hard map to be consistent at. Such a nice ice slide too. Mime driving a great run here to start a spin off. Bumper up to this block. Onto the grass pack, the only one really keeping up, but I think Mime is driving close to world her pace here. It's been flawless so far. Into the loop, though, pack with way more speed. Just close that gap a little bit. Now we're around the last turn here and jumping into a bobsleigh wall, dropping down to the finish. Looks good for Mime in the final time. 108.13. Point three away from world record for such a dank map. And now he's gonna be in the lead. <laughs> the positions are changing back and forth, guys. Like, it's so insane. It's so insane. I'm sorry, we can't have like... This is not epic enough. Uh, oh. Um... What about this? Oh, big mistake! Someone flying off the map. Who was it? It was Epos. Mine with a little bit of a poor ice slide exit. Paco in the lead. One second almost. Close battle for second place though. See the spin around. Mine got that really nicely. Closing the gap. Low jump into the quarter pipe. This is very close. Paco has this under control. But what's that second place gonna be? It looks like Pac can mind even finish now. Yes, he can. The safe jump. 1084 by Pusita Paco. Now Paco's in the lead. Whoever gets the 10 pointer basically insta goes into the lead. What's my favorite map from the map pack? To watch, I think it is um, wave control and roll cage. Because those rounds typically don't have a lot of crashes, so they're very close. If spin-off was like this every time with all four cars, it would be cool, but it's so hard to drive. You you will not see all four survive a lot. It's just so many places where you can clip and crash and stuff. And another mistake from Epos. But Paco's finding the rhythm right now. And what a time to do so, guys. With 14 points left to score before he hits finalist mode. Great time to come alive in the match. Pack here trailing the two ITB players. Didn't get that drift around the hole just like he hoped. And now it's a ITB 1v1. The backwards part. We saw Mind Jump very low. Interesting approach for him. But he does not gain towards Paco. Paco point four ahead before the ending. And it's gonna be another 108, I think. Less speed, but he has enough to hold on. 108.4. 
And Paco's at 116. Even a third place would get him finalist mode. One sixteen, one oh seven, one oh six ninety nine. This could still go to a triple finalist, quadruple finalist. So hard to win a round in this field. We saw Mime drive really fast the first round. Can he do it again? Oh, that's close to the pillar. Oh, he has to adapt. Yeah, that's not gonna be good. That was a caster's curse. And one I'm terribly sorry about. Three players remain in this round. Also, such an important round for Epos. Through the ring. Gets the dirt flick nicely. Now the drift around. Keeps the gear. This is a really fast run by Epos. No mistakes. Just clean execution. Then we see Pac and Paco side by side. Basically dead even. The backwards jump. Epos gets good speed out of that. He's going to maintain his lead, but who gets second? Paco doesn't need it. Could just deny some points, but he's going to be finalist regardless. Four points gets him there. And that will be the case. Epos at 109. Pack is at 113. <laughs> Sorry. Paco finalist. And mine 109. It's crazy. At this point, if you've never watched Mini Esport, when someone hits 120, finalist mode, you have to win a round, but it has to be a win. If you do not win, you are not going to qualify yourself to the next round. So you can get, you can drive well, you can get second place in five rounds in a row, but you will only lock in your spot winning the match by getting first place in a round. And so the others can deny Paco here. Just say bonk cup mode and be done with it, bro. I'm trying. I'm trying to like. We can't just say it's like bonk cup. We cannot just say it's like bonk cup. Here we go. Paco last out of the start. Passes mine though. Two players between him and playing in the World Cup. The semifinals of World Cup. Only one player left between him and getting there. Pack in first, doesn't get the wheel clip, survives it. What about this one? Survives that one too. Oh! Big mistake. But quick reaction time, quick thinking to have the greatest outside chance of maybe doing something. Pack will hit finalist here though, if he wins the round. And he has such a big lead. Paco can try to deny some points. Both Mime and Epos desperately need the six. Out of this round. It's a little too far for Paco. Pac will win the round. Epos versus Mime. Epos looks to get the second point. The second place, six points. And he will hold on to that. And wow. Pac means business when he drops world record to get into finalist mode. That is uh, current world record. 11376. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Double finalist pack and Pasito Paku. Can he do it again? Not enough to reach 120 points. You have to win this important round. And usually the first round is a great chance to do so. Just after you hit the point limit. Because now is when you have the momentum. Looks like he gets a good start. Pusita Paco is close by. Mimas Crash. Epos. The only one left to deny either of them. A spot. The pack is still driving so clean. A little bit of a slowdown though. And now it's very interesting. Now all three are side by side. Quick flick from all three to get a no slide on the dirt. Pack still leading by just a little bit. He crashes and Epos slides into first place. Can he get the drift right? A little bit too much on the inside. Clips the wheel. Proceed to Paco. Gets through clean. And he's going to be alone in first. One second ahead. 17 years old. Started playing a few years ago when this game came out. And now he's going to be in the semi-finals of World Cup against only veteran players so far. 
Very interesting, and congrats, Super Silfarco. <laughs> and Epos with that six pointer gets the finalist too. It's double finalist now. Top two advance, bottom two are out. One more spot in the semifinals of World Cup. Let's see. Out of the start, it's pretty equal. <laughs> Nothing decided yet. Just a lot of tension building for these wheel clips. Mime wide. Oh, Puck! Uh, <laughs> Paco, sorry, Pack clips. Mime overtakes first. Pack now just has to hope that Mime wins against Epos or Pack is out of World Cup. But Mime gets a slowdown. Air breaks to stabilize. Epo still has to set up wide and they will close the gap a little bit as Mime can get that inside line. Still, it's a tenth in favor of Epos. Epos failed the drift last time. Can he fix it? Gets a good exit and extends his lead by so much. Epos and Pasita Paco. The two young and upcoming players versus the veterans. Are they going to make it happen here? Epos with one more drift to go, and you are in the semifinals of World Cup. Lock it in! GG's. What a match. Regardless of who got through here, we would be saying goodbye to some very good players, guys, but such is the format. And two very fun players move on. Epos came back, yeah, he was far behind. He was very far behind. Great prediction? Yeah, I don't wanna I don't wanna say I, I said so, but <laughs> But I did. <laughs> I did say so. But it was uh, like you saw how this match could have gone any direction. I guess the two winners in both matches, it's pure luck. Don't gamble, chat. Pure luck. I mean, for you guys, it's luck if you don't have the script. So let me catch you up to speed on what's happening now. There is a grand final of the playoffs. I don't want to, do, you know, you to think this is the World Cup grand final. It's not. It's the final of the playoffs. What they're playing for here is getting seed one. Why is that important? Because if you are seed one, then you get to pick your opponents in the semi-finals. Uh, where are we looking here? So next week when they play the semi-finals, if you're seed one out of these four players on the right, sorry for all the... Yeah, these, that's maybe better. I don't know if it's better. You can say, like, let's, let's say Binks wins this match. You can say, oh, yeah, out of these players, I want to play against this guy, that guy, that guy. Right? It's a huge advantage. Because you might know their pace on maps, you might know where they crash most, etc, etc. So, um, that's, that's what they're going for. And it starts in... It says it starts at 8, but they're probably gonna put this sooner. Cody Tate's the favorite this time. Uh, so let's take a look at it. It's Binks, Massa. Pesito Paco and Epos. Oh, it's hard to say. Epos didn't have a great match there. Like, we've seen Epos be much more consistent. Uh, and still, a bad match for Epos was enough to get through. I think Binks is a favorite. Binks um, has been driving really well. I would probably say Binks wins. It doesn't, it, there, there's no top two. Like, second place doesn't really matter. It's just first place. So we're only predicting a winner here. I think, um, I think Binks. It's just, just, just for seeding, yeah. I thought you were doing four days of hunting deep to two. So I, I will be hunting deep to two, yeah. For a couple of days. But the thing is, is that I decided to delay it. Um, because I was a little bit sick and celebrating the win. 
I don't know if you guys know this, but if you ever have a thing that you work towards where it's like completely consuming your mind, you're just working on one thing, trying to get one thing done, and then you do it, when you wake up the next day, at least I have that feeling, I didn't want to do anything. <laughs> I literally wanted to do nothing. I wanted to give my brain just time to just full reset. I was like, yeah, no, I'm chilling today. I'm chilling. And then, uh, and then I was also a bit sick, but... But it was nice. Epos lost to Binks and Masa in round two. Did you already get the wine from Anna's dad? No, I have not. I have not. Uh, I have not. But I'm looking forward to it. I went to, uh, no, I, I wasn't, it wasn't like inactive days. I went to, um, Andrea Botas visited Stockholm the other day to do a rave. So we were at Andrea Botas's rave to support her. <laughs> she was doing one of her first DJ sets. <laughs> that happened. I didn't have wine, but I had some, some drinks at a tapas place. Was it a good set? Yeah. Yeah, no, she killed it. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was just at the place that they... The venue was... I want to say pretty bad. <laughs> it's the craziest thing I've been to. The venue is called the Slaughterhouse. And what it is, is what it sounds like. Someone bought an old slaughterhouse and turned it into a nightclub. Graffiti all over the walls, kind of this like brutalist architecture, just like tiles everywhere on the walls, like a very weird place, um, industrial place. And then not only that, but just, oh. I'm sorry, you, you did not ask for this. I'm, I'm telling you guys things you literally didn't ask. Most disgusting bathroom I've ever seen. I don't need to go into detail if you guys are just having food and chilling or whatever, but horrible. Complete degeneracy. Like if you if you're not sick and you go there, you're gonna get sick. I'm eating GG. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good thing you were already sick. Okay, I, I, I will not go into elaborate detail, but I, I have to mention this because it was barbaric. In the guy's bathroom, in this nightclub, there is no... Uh, what do you call that? Urinal. There were no urinals. There was just... A grid on the floor. <laughs> So yeah, you just went over to the grid and just, just let loose. It was wild. <laughs> it was completely wild. A grid, do you know when you're walking on the street and there's like this metal grid and a, and a, and a hole? It was like that. A grate, yeah. A grate. It was, I mean, Jesus, bro. IKEA premium bathroom. <laughs> <coughs> like to catch all the blood from the floor, probably, probably something like that. But no, it, um, the smell was horrendous. Jesus Christ. And my friend warned me too, he was like, bro, you might want to take a leak before you go to this place. Because it's, it's third world, like, it's insane. It's insane. I want Deep to 2, Deep to 2 after this map. Part of the charm. It's not, bro, it's not, I was scared. <laughs> 
Did you beat Diplo 2? Yes, I did. And we're going back to chase world record after this. Casting for Janik. Janik, do you want to join this? Completely optional. Question mark? You don't have to join. I'm having some fries while I'm waiting, tap. It's not really fair that I can talk about to you guys something completely disgusting when I'm not eating and then have a bite after. Just ruining you guys' entire dinner, I'm sorry. Hello? Hello. Hello. Um, I don't know if I can enter the the server. Oh, so screen share? Screen share. Yeah. Sure thing. I'm gonna screen share in low quality, so I'm not lagging my stream. Okay, sure. I hope that's fine. That, uh, that's fine. Can you see, Inside. like, tell me if this looks good. If you can read the numbers and stuff. I can. Everything is fine. Honestly, it works out great. Okay. Well, let's go then. Janik, you've become known as the physics guy. Oh, great. That's, that's My comments are all I've like, who's wanted. the physics guy? <laughs> and where can I hear more? Oh, is it from the video you uploaded? Yeah, from the deep to finish. Because it just starts yeah, with I you explaining it. physics, which is very funny. <laughs> I saw the start of it, and then I heard myself start to explain about, like, uh, it, like, if this was an infinite universe, and I was like, dude, why did I do that in the fucking, in the run, in this run? But, but you know what, Janik, though, like, it's the combos like that, that made me drive the start so well, and people don't realize that. That's, like, there were I mean, some comments nice. that were like, why is he distracting virtual when you're doing the opposite? Yeah, it's like I had to distract you from the fact that the game was boring. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. I get that. But hello, chat. Hope everybody's it's having a, a great Sunday and a, had a great weekend. And hope you guys have had fun with the World Cup. It is pretty interesting. It's crazy how tight the previous match was. It was so close. We also I'm also had, uh, so... It's, it's so weird to have Pac and Mime get knocked out. It is, right? I felt so delusional predicting Pusito Paco Epos in the previous match. Because yeah. we're so used to seeing Mime and Pac in, in World Cup. Like, it's crazy to not. Also, look at this, guys. Masa has been trying this line right here. He goes over a gap, which you wouldn't really think is possible to cross. Uh, where is it? He extended his drift like five times to do that. Yeah, right here. <laughs> it's possible to go through here to get an inside line for the ending. And save, um, save some time. The problem is that, you know, I mean, these maps, all of these maps are incredibly difficult. And you don't want to end up trying to risk for 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 if, if you're going to lose something crazy, like touching the corner there, for example. I think that's, all, and, and he mentioned it, it's only like a last option strategy. Like, you're behind, yeah. you're losing. You have to gain just a few hundredths, you might as well send it, right? It's that That's type true. of strategy. I actually looked at, um, do you remember way back in the day, you made, a, um, you made a competition on creating identities? Yeah. And I submitted an identity, which didn't do well in your competition, but it got picked up by it one of the maps. For and got yeah, I remember, I remember. And I, I looked at the map recently. Yeah. Uh, just for fun, because of this, uh, because the World Cup was happening. And it is crazy how much better they've been become at making maps. Back in the day, it was just a map with barely any scenery and just bare bones. And now it looks like this. It's crazy how pretty it, this so, is. I would say the scenery on this is good, but I actually think, especially this map, the racing lines are unrewarding. I don't like this map because of all the I mean, wheel clips. Oh, I mean, that's true. I'm, I'm not gonna, I haven't tried it because these maps are so unbelievably difficult that I am just fine with not Yeah, doing it. I, I'm also fine with not driving them, but <laughs> you just see rounds get decided by things that are just like, ugh. Like I'm petting well, my camera thing, right? here. You, you gotta walk a line between making something that's difficult enough for the pros to be challenged, but not so difficult that 
you know, every round just comes down to, well, somebody crashed. Yeah, especially this corner right here. People yeah. will risk and sometimes wheel clip. The same with this inside line here. It's so tight, there's no alternative. If you clip the wheel here, you lose, you know, the gear and so much speed. It's just yeah. annoying. Granati went out to that, I think. And then there's one more wheel clip right here, where if you clip the wheel either on the inside or here, then you lose uh, too much time to win. And and you might just think, okay, that's fair. That's fair. That's rewarding mechanics. Like you win if you don't crash and you lose if you crash. Makes sense, right? Well, yes, yeah. but also no. Like if it was always happening that no matter what, if you cross an edge, you lose speed. I'd say it's fair. But th it's like less likely than likely that it happens. You're like 80% yeah. to survive, 20% to get a wheel clip. And so you, you will go for it. The odds are in your favor. It's better to risk and score a 10 than safe and score four, you know? I mean, you're right, but like, that's the thing, right? Um, a lot of people talk about this when you cast, yeah. and you're like, oh, you cast to curse them or something. No, because what happens is that the players, the reason they go that tight and the reason they sometimes clip is because they get pushed so hard by the other players to drive faster than is reasonable that you are yeah. forced to go for these risky lines and that's why they crash. Yeah. So you see like Binks there, right? He went fully over the corner knowing that it can clip. Yeah. But he, he gets a good line and then there's no problem. But the game is deterministic, Virtual. It is. She doesn't know better how like micro level polygons affect your crash, whether it's a oh, 100 percent. Yeah, you need to be able to adjust the 65,000 different different inputs from analog to hit the exact uh, pixel that you need. Uh, I think the best maps in this pool are secrets, um, wave. What was it called? Wave. <laughs> Sorry, forgot the exact name. Wave control and roll cage. Like they make for the most interesting rounds. Mm. And then this one yeah. and spin off the zoom 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 spin in a circle. They're just pure chaos. So what would you rather have? Would you rather that oh this is just hypothetical. Yeah. That we have really difficult maps where the maps kinda get down to who crashes or who can risk the most. Or have more easier maps where the rounds are down to who can precision drive like that one hundreds faster. I want a map pack that has a balance, but Mostly easier maps, yeah. Easier maps with close rounds. Because it seems more... Because the thing is, Chad, that I don't think that people kind of appreciate how difficult these maps are. Yeah. It's the same with Deep Tip. A lot of people came into my, my chat and said, Oh, I really appreciate you trying these floors so I can really see how good Virtual is. <laughs> and Jane, it's because... I got, a, I got a comment don't... today. I don't want to yeah? ruin your monologue, but the, the viewer asked for if, like, you know, Understandably, how difficult is this actually? Like, I've never played yeah. Trickmania, so I can't tell. And then after someone explained to him, like, yeah, there's this guy that's tried, he started Trickmania when the map came out, has tried every day since then and only reached floor six, it's really difficult, right? Mm -hmm. The guy has 400 hours on the map, only floor six, started with that. <laughs> Still impressive. The commenter then goes, yeah, I think I could do it in less time than virtual but I just don't have 200 hours to put into the game and try it, so, sorry. <laughs> and I was like, bro... <laughs> not it is only, unbelievable. Not only installing Trackmania and beating Deep Dip, but in less time than me, I almost want to pay this man to quit his job and go for it and make a clap of himself <laughs> on the internet. That's the wildest thing I've ever heard anyone say in the comments. But it's 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 that whole uh, what is it Dunning Kruger effect or whatever so, yeah, it's called. It's it's so hard to get an appreciation for how difficult the maps are. Yeah, uh, you you really can't without having tried it yourself. Yeah, you should bet him that would that would work. But um, I we're think we're, we're are we live after yeah, this warm up? Yeah, we're starting. It's the warm up, guys. Ten seconds. Let's just um, set the stage. It is the finals of the play-in to World Cup. Uh, these players have all locked in their spot in World Cup. So no one is getting knocked out here. They will be playing in the semifinals next week. What they are playing for is that whoever wins this match gets seed one, and that means picking their opponents in their semifinal. So they can say, yeah, this guy was the slowest. I want to play him. 
And that's a huge advantage. So that's what we're going for. Castlemania round you know? one. Puck with mistake. Ooh, early mistake. You can already see how different the lines are in the start. And, and we have like multiple car lengths of difference between Epos, Masa and Binks there up in front. They're driving really close together though. Yeah, and Binks actually opting to go around the wheel clip. Doesn't want to mess with it. This one is unavoidable, but he tries still to stay away from the edges. Oh, inside line here too. Binks is looking sharp already and definitely one of the favorites. Going now to a wide setup before the grass turns. So he can get a low smooth line here, but this is the hardest and most important turn. Auto slide into this with good speed. Him and Masa side by side have been waiting the entire day while the others have played many matches to get here. Both of them undefeated through their bracket. Now, the last part of the map. Is Masa going to risk this? I don't think so. Far too early days. Still going to score six. Even... Oh, he is! <laughs> <laughs> and he gains a lot, but it's not enough to overtake. Wow, he's probably practiced that all night. I that thought it's early days. Cool. You get the six. No problem. He still goes for it. <laughs> good, good attempt. I mean that was really impressive by Masa, but he, we also did see him try it multiple times during the warm-up, but I thought it was more to showcase the fact that you could do it, but or apparently just like not. Have it, as a, sitting... have it as an alternative, but no, he, he wanted it. Must feel good to hit that too in the first round, even if it didn't materialize. Did you see moments. how much he, uh, he gained? It was around 800. He was 14 behind and then 6 on the finish. Okay, that is very strong though. Yeah, that's a strong alternative mime into... Uh, oh, sorry, Paco. <laughs> Same card skin into the wall. And not a good start for him, two crashes in a row. But Masa and Epos up in front. Actually, Masa kind of all alone, but he went for a super wide line. That gives more speed, but again, you have to drive over more roads. So now, once again, all the cars are quite close to each other. Slide cancelling, making sure that when you're in third gear, you don't want to accidentally slide out it's gonna lose you some time here with the low air time on the grass now don't clip the wheel binks. right hander <laughs> what a drift from binks to overtake keyboard master race just tapping away here if you don't know binks a keyboard player and not just that he used to be a laptop keyboard player in the pro league a couple of years ago now he plays on a Regular gaming setup, I think, and Masa again going for the line clipping, but Binks will not hold on! Ooh. Masa takes that one! So he gains a spot with the strategy. So definitely looking like he's know. going for it every round. You never know, maybe those two points are the two points that, you know, change whether or not you get into finalist. Yeah. It is a difference. So far, um, so good for him. Now I want to know, Bustito Paco, how, how much in the pro scene has he been so far? Like, because I, I don't much. remember seeing him in the last World Cup. Did he I? played the Beacon Cup, I think, and he also played the monthly tournaments a lot the past couple of months mm -hmm. to score enough points to be part of the tournament. Uh, he's only 17, Janik. <laughs> and he's really sick for 17. Here, I think that is a big mistake, so it might be his round finally to win. Yeah, talking about Bustito Baco, he now is in the lead. I mean, he's playing for ITV, which is also super impressive. Going for this very narrow line. Nobody clips the wheel here in front, so that's good. Masa is pushing hard to get closer. Yeah, that's Quick slowly. snap back to the no slide. And I mean, there is quite a difference. Point three separating the two top players. Point four down to Epos. And I think Masa is once again going to try his line. Oh, Epos almost wheel clipping. And I think Masa, yeah, he will try. It's hard to get closer here, but Paco struggled a little bit in this downhill. Typically, it was a bit wider than the others. Like you see there, and sometimes the others gain here. Must have gained 600th by the looks of it. It's still looking too far. And now, yeah, it decides not worth it to risk the line. Possessions remain. 10 for Paco. Closing the gap. Not falling too far behind. And Masa just consistently scoring second places here. Making him tied for first in the match. I mean... Consistent second place is not bad at all. You do want to have those occasional first places just to make sure that you can uh, lock it out once you get that finalist mode. But I think what Masa is doing is if he's within point one, I think he's going to try to go for the sneaky little e uh, ending line. Yeah. But at that, that was almost point two of a difference going into the final turn. That's too much. You're not going to oh, save that anyway. Oh, wheel clip. Mistake from Masa there. <laughs> Big somehow avoids the wall here. I don't know. That looked like a guaranteed crash. He still has some equity, but it's far behind now, point two. And now he might start risking the other wheel clips. Yeah, he starts going over the corners now, knowing that this is going to be too far with safe approaches. And he's gaining. 
Epos and Paco getting caught up to reeled in by Binks, who doesn't want too much of a no slide. Could maybe enter it earlier, as the others did. But just trying to safe and get the drift here better than the others. Gets it better than Paco. Epo still ahead. Straightening out for the gear up. Looks good for Epos before the last couple of corners. Gets past the bumps all right. Binks, though, is chasing him down. Early drift setup. Great speed for Binks. Trying to come through. Has to get a small drift adjustment. But is it enough? Oh, what a snipe. 5,000 of a second. Impressive ending there by Binks. Did you see he also on the downhill got so much speed that he lifted one of the wheels off but still maintained ground contact just to push that as much as he could into the final turns? Yeah, it was insane uh, in that approach. Super well done. Super well done there by Binks. Getting the overtake 5,000s. And, you know, sometimes 5,000s of a second is is the differentiator, which is impressive on maps like this. I could not drive that consistently. Yeah, me neither. And uh, they're just, like, we're taking it so for granted, like we said earlier, the maps are hard. Surviving is one thing, surviving plus three seconds of world record is another thing. That's that's basically what you get after a few hours of practice on this map. And then it's driving, like, 114 on repeat consistently, back to back to back to back, <laughs> which is just unheard of. Have you given these maps uh, a good go yourself? I have not. And I'm honestly scared. <laughs> I think it'll make me feel so bad. Danik, I'm, I'm feeling on top of the Trickmania... Like, oh, true. I'm feeling as good as I've ever felt at the game, right? I beat Deep Tip. I don't want to go into this and then feel like an idiot again. I want to <laughs> live on this high for a bit before I play anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and you say that, but then you're going into like world record hunting deep dip afterwards, so... Yeah. Yeah, no, we're gonna try uh, after this match. I'm excited. Excited to try. I, I'm excited to see, to see it because, as you said, you know, if the, uh... If the pressure's off... Yeah, there's no nerves. There's no pressure on trying to get it, so I'll, I'll, hopefully it goes well. On to secrets, though. If you guys haven't seen this map and you're confused, there's a lot of tricks and shortcuts here. The mappers have built one safe path a lot of places and then one sneaky risky path, one secret. Like this beam here that you just saw them jump over. And a last jump between the trees onto this ramp. Left side now for the risky finish onto the bubble binks. Whew! Starting with a point five, that's just two tons off of world record. Oh, okay. Uh, it, yeah, they don't show world record on screen, but I'm assuming that is a point three then. Hello? Alright, I'm back. Just have to blow my nose. Big oh, okay, I was so lead. confused. Yeah, I no, thought sorry. my PC. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Still the cold, just hitting me hard. But uh, very close, apart from Binks with a small lead now building up. Dang. And then the downhill, Epos in the lead right now. Binks is right behind, going for almost the exact same line there into the box line. Epos now still in the lead, Binks so close. The half pipe gets a low line, not quite enough. Still trying to push really hard to get that overtake. Ooh, that's, that's also a really low line. I don't know if he really clipped there. Epos getting more speed out of it though. Yeah, I think Binks had a small wheel clip on the landing. Oh, this is so dangerous on keyboard. It's a really hard alignment to make. And he has a chance here, Binks. Does he get a better landing? Yeah, the nose dive! And he snipes away another time. Sad for Epo, so from first to last in that final jump, really. I think what they're trying to do, Janik, is air break at an exact timing so that they land the ramp and get a nose dive over it. That seems to be like the timing you have to get. Oh. So you land earlier with the nose afterwards as well. Yeah. And, and uh, if you don't get that nose dive, you actually don't get enough speed, I don't think. Ooh, Masa with a bumpy landing, unfortunate. Not too much in his control after the nose steer. What happened to Ebos there in the start? I, it's a nose steer first flip, so he might have had the wrong angle. Oh, I see. But that allows Bustido Paco and Binks to Bro, get Binks up is there running away with this. Binks league. gets another. Oh, I was going to say another 10. Ah, the crashes keep happening. Luckily, it's not the worst part to crash, but he's far out of the equation now if the others drive clean up front. Paco with a good chance. Instead. Oh. 
Masa getting a really good, really good jump right there. Getting closer to Paco, but is it enough to overtake here as we enter the last section with these very funky jumps up? Very nice low line, getting the nose down. No Hopefully he is here. able to. The air brake, uh, Masa doesn't, yeah, Masa does it actually. Trying to get that landing a bit better. Paco wins though, 106.95. <laughs> looks really scary to drive that and especially the jump up to the beam looks incredibly precise yeah just like one tiny steering top wrong and you're off 50 42 35 34 the score line i'm at zero still hasn't been the best match for me oh sorry mm. about that small freeze <laughs> clicked off the screen we're back but uh interesting to see now how momentum shifts i think Masa had a good showing on the first map, but now on this one, apart from, um, well, previous round, he hasn't uh, kept that momentum going. Now, he's had a couple of unfortunate starts here, but he's not too far behind, and we've seen oh. multiple, like, just right there. You see how fast it can go from being on first, second, down to last, as Pink's make a mistake. And look at that line from Masa, just flicking ahead of his opponents now, tying up for first with Paco. And going into the final section, is he going to find these low jumps? And Paco gets the better of the first one. Even Epos, I think. No, he's further behind. Paco versus Masa again. Paco and Keyboard, the one that is a very hard last steering tap to make. Doesn't get the best of it there. And now, Masa going for the risky finish. Oh, he's slow for this one. Eee! It's enough. Oh, oh my god. He in the chat, if you felt that one. Masa with 10 points. And screw everything the caster said, he's back. 07 is the time, so they have driven faster, but sometimes you also just have to utilize or capitalize on the fact that your opponents make mistakes, and once they do, you just have to hit that finish, especially when the maps are this difficult. And you're right, jumping up to that beam with a keyboard is very precise. Do you think they use action keys for that? I would, but it's, um, it, it's so... Like, even on Deep Tip, you have more time to think about the jump but it happens at 340 speed <laughs> like it's basically fifth gear <laughs> and you're descending it so um no it's, it's really hard and if you look at every map every um one good indicator in general in pro track mania to tell if they're driving good lines or not is just to check how much dime downtime is there between between each action so they're gonna full left full right here straighten out now full left like, they're always doing something. If you have downtime, that means you haven't driven the previous part with optimal speed. Like, they're always just maneuvering between left and right. There, There's not much just stopping time. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, and I've, I've uh, said this a lot. I've done a lot of... That's an interesting wall bong. I'm assuming that's, you know, what you have to do. It's, but I remember uh, they, yeah. they disallowed, you know, tactical wall hits a while back. So that one, some people do it without the wall hit, but the wall hit is just very consistent. They try to crash the A, the first A in Track Mania, and then yeah. they have a good uh, setup for the next part, wet tires. Muscle driving very fast up front here. This is close to the record we've seen, 106.2 the record, Ooh. but he goes off the top of the wall right and binks can now extend his match lead, especially when Musa, who's in second, is going to score worse because of that mistake. Paco gets the six, and Masa gets four. Epo still time to finish. Yeah, three seconds to go. It is actually a, it's a fun piece of trivia for chat, just so you guys know. Um, back in the day, there was a lot of wall hitting going on in Trackmania. There still is in the old game, and it was prevalent in esports as well, like these high-level tournaments. And a way to combat that is that they added very aggressive penalties for touching a wall and you guys know them today as acceleration penalties but yeah. when they got added they were worse than they are now they were so <laughs> bad that the whole trackmania community kind of complained and then they kind of tuned it down a little like bit. basically Nadeo wanted to just nullify intentional crashes in pro play so much so that they made the gameplay experience worse throughout yeah. <laughs> it's just you crash once and your car won't accelerate for two seconds it was really bad <laughs> So we it was that very extreme in the start. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a good middle balance now, though. Oh, Binks with a small near disaster. Had to release a lot. But not even losing that much. Getting closer to Masa right now with more speed. Getting a good wall hug. Both of them. Better line for Binks. Getting, 
More you speed him here. Sneaking up there. And now he's almost caught up. Low jump, a little bit too low. Masa with the advantage going to the bug slide, but has to get close around the panel and does so. Mm. 1065. 10 points to Masa. Masa is doing quite well on all the maps. He did have, as you said, a little bit of a slower section there on, on the last map, but had a uh, had a good time utilizing the fact that the other opponents there unfortunately make some small mistakes and you just mm. try to be a little bit more consistent. Yeah, and we've seen matches today where the players have basically had the same points all the way. This is a very stretched out field. If you look at points, Epos with the weakest showing so far. I don't think we've seen him get many 10 pointers except for on Castle Mania. Paku as well had a really good showing on uh, previous map, but here falling a bit behind. So we need to see him. Have some clean rounds too. On board with Epos for this one. Must have a mistake on the entry to the ice. You want to get a lot of this booster here down, like Binks does, but Epos showing that you can still make it through with the alternative, which is to get a little bit less of the booster and a wider setup, more speed. That way, now Binks is about a tenth behind. The wall hug is good for him though. Oh. Once again, tries to get left early, but that goes better for Epos. Small advantage in his favor. The quarter pipe jump. Equal, and we're gonna see the bugs on the side at Epos setting up very wide here, but good speed, and we'll take it. Great round, though. It's not often that you have three players drive mid 106. Yeah, that was very impressive. I've also kind of seen them do higher attempts at that at that um, half pipe there in the ending. But my God, they're going low when they're pushing it. Like yeah. they they are not leaving a lot of room for those wheels. No, and I, it, it's, it has to be just pure intuition. Yeah. Like, there's no visual indicators to aim for, it's just, you've done that jump a hundred, two hundred times in practice, you kind of just get a feeling for how you should angle your car and at what speeds, but it's always different each time you approach it, right? The dirt before, how you set up for that. Yeah, exactly, and that's one of the things that uh, I've talked to a lot of people about with, uh, with regards to doing rounds like this. Wow. You need to be able to adjust to every situation. Sometimes you don't have the amount of speed that you want. Sometimes you have more speed than you expect. Keep on trying these different lines Dude. so that you can always adjust to what situation you're in. Binx's run right now is crazy. <laughs> he drove the middle part so well. I don't know what the split down here is going to be. We'll see. Maybe I'm overrating this, but this is close to world record pace again. And just, yeah, I, I think this is very fast. A little bit too high on the dirt. Maybe a... No, I'm not going to say that was too high. Bug slide the sides. What's the final <laughs> time here? Jesus Christ, 106.31. It's almost world record. About a little less than a tenth of a second away from world record. Impressive play there by Binks. It is absolutely insane. You guys gotta gotta realize that when they drive world record here, there's no pressure of of rounds format. Usually the world records on these maps they're driven in in just practice mode where they just sit and try the map again and again and again. But doing it consistently in a you know rounds format at the finals of the playoffs is crazy. Yeah. Just randomly saw a notch tweeted about virtual a few days ago. Yeah, it was crazy. He was watching the deep dip grind, I think. Just like you guys for real. Spamming <laughs> E in chat and watching deep dip. <laughs> you are the same. One to one. Spin off. Have you seen this map, Janik? I have. I saw you uh, introduce it here the last time they played it. Let me, it's uh, a very wicked map. Introduce it once more for people who haven't seen it. You uh, play an acrobatic map, essentially. Every part looks like they're doing this for show, for swag, but it's the only real way to get through with an ice spin there. And now here also a bug slide, followed by a bobsleigh spin while you were waiting for the frost tires to go away. And oh, one player goes out of the running. That was Paco falling off the map. Binks a bit wide. Epos the only one with a clean line. Exceptionally hard map to drive here. This is uh, yeah. not easy to drive. That ice side after the jump is insanely tight as well. This map just looks like it's not driven, like not map. Well, it looks like it's mapped by somebody who just wants things to be wicked, but it's crazy that it works at a pro level. Yeah, I mean, there are deep dip floors that are way easier than this, guys. This is a really, really hard challenge to drive for cleanly for one minute straight. And especially the pace that Epos is driving it at 108, maybe even 107 pace. 
for the winning time here. 1085. Rudiker is 1078. But I'm assuming there's an absolute crazy amount of risking going on in the world record. And on, on a map like this, yeah. Only two players finished. So the others got zero points. Because they, did, okay. they didn't get there in less than 10 seconds. That is how it would look if almost any other player in the chat would play this map right now. Like, if, if we just had four random chatters, one person would finish and the other three would just not. I, I don't even know if the, Like, if you put four chatters against each other on this, I don't think any of them beat the map, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're probably right, that, honestly. That is the level but of... This, I, yeah? I think, that, I think this map is a really good showcase of the fact that when you play on a high enough level, you can remove almost all of a map and still be able to drive it because when you're playing with lines that are so tight, you only really touch a very small amount of the map. You do, the yeah. The rest is just there in case you make a mistake. It's just scenery. Once you got yeah. the lines down, Bing's driving even faster up front now. And look at his lead on the points as well. It's still staying up there. About 12 points ahead of Sakin and Masa, but Masa's last now. So that could extend. Oh, Paco almost crashing on the no-breaks part. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Some last-minute reactions there. 108.04 is a spectacular time, honestly. It's 0.2 off of world record. Very, very fast here. That is incredible. I can't, I can't imagine what they were thinking when they saw this map to begin with. It must be such a daunting task learning the map. Yeah. No, the discovery of this probably went like, what am I playing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I playing? What am I doing? Binks almost crossing the 100 uh, point threshold. After that, he needs 20 more. 120 points to get to so-called finalist mode. Win one round then and you're the winner of the match. But we'll see if he can get there, if the others can deny him the steady progress he's been having. Good line from Musa, low line there to catch up. Into the ice slide. In. He's struggling a bit though. Someone else struggling. Epos, I think, didn't get the ice slide right. And Binks is still just pushing on here, Dinek. It is such small margins that change th your trajectory there on the ice slide and the, and the jump down through the hole. Like, it is oh, almost no margin of error to be. Oh, look at the speed! Ustadiko is. Ustido Paco. This is a hard name to pronounce, man. Oh, Binks it, got so scammed, I think. He got a slowdown from an edge or something, and then he couldn't make it across the red booster backwards. Oh, so no. Overtakes. But the winning time would have been insane. I think Binks, yeah, Binks was world record pace. That's a 108 flat from Paco, and Binks was a far ahead. Shame we can't see his, um, his copium timer there, but I'm sure Paco will gladly take those 10 points to get up closer to Epos and almost get out of that fourth spot. Yeah, Binks still scoring three. It's important for him just to keep keep the pace. Only Paco gets 10, the others, you know, 6 and 4, didn't gain too much towards him. And it's not, we're not playing for top 2 here, we're only playing for first, so puts even more weight on that. And Masa not getting the start here, 1.6 seconds behind. Let's maybe go on board with Binks and see, oh, Epos is having a mistake. That is such an unfortunate clip there, and look at the inside line there from Binks, really utilizing the fact that gravity or the pressure there into the pipe and into the ice side here, oh Paco my. trying to push, yeah, and that is an inside clip from Binks. Inside clip, and Paco, regardless, just had a beautiful dirt flick out of that. Point 0.4 difference. What's this tag point time going to be over here? 47.7. A little bit slower than last round, but still incredibly fast. Nothing to complain about. Binks will be happy here with six points, I think, but will be ready to... Snipe oh, Paco if there's no a break mistake. Section as yeah, well. you have to release there. Paco makes it 10 points again for him. 20 in a row here. That is very nicely done. And what ha if you get fourth seed, do you just not decide anything? Do you just you're just I th I think even place? with with second and I don't know how it works with second and third seed, but I, first seed is the one you want. I don't think they play for second and third. Okay. Well, I mean, I can ask you a question that is always going to be uh, a little bit uh, controversial, but if you were first seed, <laughs> virtual, who are we picking? So let's be, let's be exceptionally <laughs> clear. 
that regardless who I would pick here, I would get clapped. I could train 10 hours more than them, I'd get completely clapped and obliterated in the match, alright? Mm -hmm. So, let's, let's make that very clear. Now, I think, for me, as someone who is slightly worse at the game than these players, I would pick the glass cannons. I would not pick Carl Jr. Okay. as my opponent, you know? He's just rock solid. Uh, too consistent. Too consistent. I'd pick a player that is very momentum-based and, like, you know, tilt-based. Okay, yeah. Where if they tilt, then, you know, like, you suddenly have chances if they get in their own head about it. And that's gonna be the less experienced. So I'd actually, I okay. think I'd have the best chances against the newcomers, like Paco and Epos. Okay. Against, o against Otak and Carl Jr., I, I like, bro, <laughs> I don't need to play the match. Uh, Put down the keyboard. No. There's no points. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is really hard fighting against the people that have been so used to going on stage and fighting in front of a bunch of people for for prizes. Oh. Like, they are very, very much recognized as the veterans of, especially like Carl Jr., known as the GOAT, right? But I don't think it will be long before we get used to these new names. Me too. Binkster had a good lead, but then he clipped his tire on the tire. And now Massa versus Paco. It's going to be Massa in first and almost Binks in second. But yeah, half a second, 0.6 of a difference here. You can really tell how difficult the maps are compared to like old versions of TMGL where the differences were down to the tenths or sorry, to the hundreds. Uh, especially the... Um, uh, I don't know if you remember, but there was one where the maps weren't even that long, and it was just exactly the same as this. I actually like this um, format quite a lot. Yeah. Now, the, the four-player the... cup mode is, is usually nice, but... Yeah, I think the, the maps being closer is often more fun visually than when you know the players are so consistent they won't fail a big lead or something like that. But this map yeah. is great. This map, they don't crash that often. And you actually get to see the, the different racing lines be the decider, rather than who survives. Great line onto the wood from Paco. Gonna catch up to Masa here with a lot of speed. Masa still trying to hold on. And actually getting a great approach here on the off-road. Same for Epos. Masa, though, is driving so fast. This is a banger. This is a 113 pace run. He is feeling it right now. We gotta check what uh, final time is gonna be. Because I think this could be close to the current world record. 113.82 by Gwen is the current world record. That is such an interesting lying on downhill on the dirt there. Almost Ooh. stopping fully to get the downhill Ooh, without drifting. And that is some small clip, but still making it. 113.9, you called it virtual. 113.9, but he, he had a bad ending. Like, it was world record with a good yeah. ending. If you got a little bit more of the dirt b before the tire thing. Like, he, and he's almost caught up to Binks. Masa could get seed one here. I don't know how many people predict about in Twitch chat, but not my uh, my favorite coming into this. And he's showing that you know a lot of what I think people think about his driving might be uh, might be wrong. He is more consistent. He is less of a glass cannon than people might think. Yeah, I mean we have seen. Well, at this point we've seen almost all the pros at least tilt once, but. It is important to uh, to know that he, his last teammate, Granati, when he played, they played really well yeah. during the uh, TMGL. They played together, and I think Masa also is really trying to push himself this time. I've seen him on Twitter post a lot about the World Cup here, so I think he's put in a lot of effort. And it shows leading against Paco and leading against Binks, who we saw beat great players like uh, Pac earlier out of the tournament. Now Masa again getting the better line here. He is going to extend his lead. Oh, yeah, I see that, but the bumps get the better of him. Paco in first. Where's Binks now? Binks has made an even bigger mistake, so Masa will get out of this with six. Further catching up to Binks in first. Oh, and that is the line there in the ending that Paco got that would have yeah. given Masa an incredible time last round there. You touch the, you touch the dirt with your right set of tires. And then you jump low left side next to the stack of tires. <laughs> okay. And yeah. that gives you like more ground contact and a perfect line into the finish. Yeah. I, I think Muscle lost about 0.2 in the ending uh, previous run. 
Oh, one slow down the start. Very unfortunate. I think it was Binks, yeah. You can get this wheel clip in the start where you just lose time and it's not really your fault. It just happens with the line you have to take. Slightly unfortunate. Landing in the sausage in a drift and then extending that drift by brake tapping six times or something like that. A very <laughs> long extension very to that long drift. Drifts. What's interesting now though is that Binks will get finalist no matter what with those three points he gets for uh, just completing the map. And Massa, if he gets first place here, will make it double finalist at the same time. And uh, Janek, <laughs> the way he's driving right now, I give this a pretty high probability. I, I mean, look at the pace he's on again, and look how far, just look at how far ahead he is to his opponents. He is definitely showing up strong here on roll cage. And I mean, one more, turn around and we're gonna see him into the ending is he gonna get the ending as you described here a that moment ago very... oh, if he does it he... good that looks good that's good he's gonna be finalist with <laughs> Binks. i was not sure there but the wheel i think is actually plastic so i don't think he lost too much it's still dangerous to bounce on any plastic is what you found out from playing deep dip i've heard yeah i've become a plasticator <laughs> i i think it's probably the worst block in the game, so that's that's my feelings about it, but my that's feelings don't wild. matter. The facts matter, and the facts are that Binks and Moss are finalists, 1v1. Yeah, and they got, they got 15 seconds before the round starts here. We're back to the first map, Castle Mania, and once again, we're going to be looking at these inside lines and potential wheel clips. It would be so unfortunate if uh, one of them, they go out or don't get to uh, really fight fairly for that first place if it's just a random wheel clip. Yeah. Let's hope that the game is nice. No wheel clips that slow you down. And that we have a clean round. Ooh. Masa almost going to inside line. But yeah, that was very risky. <laughs> you can't really keep fourth gear anyway. He just dropped to third a bit earlier than the rest. And it's actually the best start line. Tied right now with the other finalist Binks. So they go into the dirt. Better landing for Masa. Binks still on the inside of the dirt. No, but this is really good for Masa here. He is point time ahead. Yeah, full car length ahead of Binks, but Binks is not out yet. He's still pushing it as hard as he can. And you can see trying to go for this super tight line, the full front left wheel going over the gap, not clipping, but Masa is not letting go of that lead. Look at that counter steer into no slide. And Masa will continue to have the speed to make it up to first. Is he going to keep it all the way through virtual? This is the most important drift, and he gets it good. That's a really good drift. Lands early on the dirt, gets the gear on the road, actually delays it, intentionally not speed sliding. Binks is hot on his trail, two tons behind, but I think Masa here, especially with this ending line, he's not. Oh, is he thinking about it? Is he thinking about it? Binks here is approaching rapidly. No oh way! my god, there's no way it's so close. <laughs> okay, Masa holds on and wins. The. Uh, that playing i mean that was Done. a very very strong last round there from Massa as well being ahead for such a long time and binks barely getting the snipe there with the inside line on the last right hander super well played by both the players but Massa is taking it home in the end i think Massa toggled cars at the end there he saw there was no one and then went like oh wait what i do and then he took the safe line and then all of a sudden <laughs> binks is there like yo what, what a sick run sick run sick round all of them move on so just to recap, this match was only for the placement. Massa now gets to be one of the people that pick his opponents in the semifinals uh, when, when they're played. I think it's in two weeks from now. And then we will see Epos, Paco, and Binks again. But guys, Massa is clearly one of the favorites for the cup. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting to see how well he's going to do here in the finals, though. Uh, which is going to be later this month, right? Yeah, I think it's in two weeks. Let me actually pull up the thing so we can see exactly. Yeah, I will refer. It to is your between the 23rd and 27th of October. Exciting. Yeah, so here you have the players. Let me also pull this up. You have Otak, defending world champion. You have Mura, who won the rest of the world qualifier. Carl Jr. won the uh, American qualifier. Then you have the four players we saw now Binks, Masa, Paco and Epos, and there's one more spot, which is for XP EVO. If you win XP EVO tournament next weekend, you insta-qualify for World Cup Summer Finals. 
And that is why we see people really try hard for that tournament as well. For example, Sammy Fying has been practicing yes, so Sammy hard Fying on those could, maps. Sammy Fying could be like the World Cup summer finalist. That he, could you know. be so fun. Yeah, it could be anyone. Just insta in. But guys, we're gonna go to Deep Tip, I think. Are you ready, Drake?